All right, and we are live with the 25th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash the Seth Rukage. Uh, today, I'm joined by usual co-hosts, Sarah and Mesa. Yay. Near, 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 near. Far. Near, near, near. Far. Uh, today, we're joined by special guest and uh, good buddy, Kyle. So, wait, fuck, my brain's not working. Kyle, <laughs> how are you doing today? Thank you for coming on the show. I'm doing great. I am very excited to be here. I'm excited to uh, give very informed and very correct opinions on everything and shame you for disagreeing with me if you do. L- <laughs> litmus tests for these supposed good opinions. What do you think about Danganronpa? Never played it, but not opposed to playing them. You are a semi-decent human being then. <laughs> That's the nicest <laughs> thing ever said to me. That's exactly how I feel too, but I still have the strongest urge to dunk on it every single chance I get, even though I've never played it, never done anything with it. We'll happily play them. We'll happily play them. I feel like that's Weebology 101. (laughs) I can look into someone calling them a stupid weeb. Meanwhile, you're the biggest one. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I kind of, I kind of did that at, at my job the other day. There, there, uh, the, the theater that my job is attached to is one of the only theaters in SF showing the Demon Slayer film, and my job was just filled with weebs yesterday. <laughs> I'm just filled with them, and I'm like, oh no, the weebs! <laughs> I'm like, they're here. Well, we had, I, I went and saw that movie. Was it Thursday night? And one of the, there was like a group that walked into the theater before it started. And one of the guys like stops when he walks in. He's, he's got a shirt on like super hyped, really excited. And he looks and he goes, man, look at all these fucking weebs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just like my man. <laughs> Hell yeah. I know what's going on. <laughs> um, before we go to go start the show, just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. Everyone's socials are on screen. You can find the link tree for my stuff down below. Um, game session podcast is filmed live here on Sundays at 6 30 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on as well as on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Um, there's a Patreon, so big shout out to um, my patrons, Robin Nomad and Sly. And I also stream games here once in a while, and I'm procrastinating the hell out of a lot of video essay ideas that the scripts are done. I just don't feel like editing them whatsoever. <laughs> but um Let's go ahead and jump back over to you, Kyle. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Like, who are you? What do you do? Um, maybe what's your playing, favorite game, or just maybe even something that you're just strongly passionate about. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Social well, security strong. card, first dog, <laughs> street you live on. So I'm, sh- I- I'm very passionate about, obviously, the, the, um, the excellent condiment that is mayonnaise. Oh, as thank we, you. As we've discussed many times and, and, and argued with many people about. However, I'm also passionate about Lunchables, so that's a different. Oh, no. I picked, the wrong, yeah. I picked the wrong Hell person. Hell yeah. Excuse you. Lunchables are tasty. I feel like they get better as you as you get older. It's You're like, ah, uh, yes, a charcuterie they, board. They, they are great. So so I'm I am a I'm a musician. I for a couple years, I had done some stuff in gaming. I had I'd written um, for a while and. Did some some occasional podcast things. Actually, fun story that I've never really shared a ton about publicly. But I once got to teach Tony Hawk how to play Battlefield. Oh wow! Um, oh, that's ooh. a dream. Which which was really cool. Uh, it was just out of the blue. This was twenty sixteen, um, and I got a call or an email from from a, a site that I won't name but they were they were doing advertisements for battlefield they were partnering with with ea and and dice to do advertisements for it and they were like hey you know could you fly out to la this week and i'm like this is a complete scam no i cannot do that (laughs) like this is like what do you no i i've i've barely done anything in this this is um but apparently there was a mutual friend who had put them in touch and they're like yeah i know he plays battlefield so go ahead and so they were like, no, we'll we'll buy the ticket. Like this is, you know, you'll come out and you'll work with a couple different, you know, people that we'll have on here to do these. So there were a couple people that I get to work with, but Tony Hawk was the one that was coolest for me because I grew up playing those games and still play those games. And I was like, this is like, sitting there in the moment. I was like, oh, cool. I'm 
playing Battlefield with Tony Hawk and showing him how to play. And then at the end of it, it was really me hiding behind the couch playing <laughs> while teaching them how to fake it mm-hmm. on a controller. Just, you know, because anytime you see something where people are fake playing games and like an advertisement or anything, you can clearly tell that they've never mm-hmm. played a video game before. So it's just like, hey, so just just put your hands like this. and You know, maybe don't keep pushing, you know, start because <laughs> it's going to look weird. Just, just do this and you'll be fine. Did uh, it look so anything it's... like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holding it upside down, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but then a couple years ago, I, I decided I've always been a musician. I started playing when I was six years old, started playing drums. So I got back into music. I've been doing that full time. It's been my big thing. But over the last, you know, year or so, I've just been kind of like, hey, I'd like to get back into doing a little bit more with gaming stuff. So I've been talking about it more and I haven't started writing about it again. It's something I'm probably going to start doing maybe over the summer when I have more free time. But so excited to to come talk about it with people and get into more. I actually play more video games now. I used to not really play as much because I would just tell myself I didn't have time. And now I'm like, no, I do have time because video games are great. Uh, even though I play like the same three games all the time. Spoiler warning, if you make a hobby out of making content about video games, you'll be surprised by the lack of video games you actually play. <laughs> <laughs> I've been true. like in the same freaking zone in Yakuza for like two weeks. No problems. <laughs> It's bad. Uh, quick, qu- back to back to the Tony Hawk thing. Do you put that on your resume by any chance? I do not. Oh. Did he introduce himself as "Hi, I'm Tony Hawk, the guy from Tony Hawk"? <laughs> no, no. It was, it was. So, like, some of the other people that were there that were part of it were a little more. Well, I guess some of them were pretty normal. So, like, uh, Rob Riggle was one of them, who was pretty down to earth and pretty normal. Jeff Ross was one of them um riff raff was the other one who was that was a very interesting experience and then amber rose which was the only one that was a little like there was really no communication there was kind of like an entourage that came in and was like here's how we're doing things um but tony hawks like that one more than anyone else just felt like hey here's some dude in his 40s just coming in and hanging out yeah even though I'm sitting here going like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> this is like, I can die happy now. This is so cool. And he's just like, tell me about, how, you know, his kids play these games. He's like, yeah, I'm not very good at it. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, don't ask him anything about the Tony Hawk games. Don't like, don't, don't be that guy. Don't <laughs> do that. And it was, it was so hard because I wanted, like, I, I had so many questions that I wanted to ask and I had like, and I didn't, and I probably could have, and I probably should have, but I was like, I don't, I don't want to be because it was like I, I was there for two days and they had people in for like three hour blocks. So it was one of those like, right, I don't want to use it. Like, I don't want to be unprofessional. I don't want to like, I want to do something like this again. This That'd be cool. And I've never mm-hmm. gotten to do anything like that again, whatever. But I was like, it's like, gosh, this is, this is really cool. So I do, I do regret not being able to, to, to ask those, but it was cool seeing when like I saw, I think the advertisements were on like Facebook and YouTube and stuff. And I saw them. I was like, Hey, I, I know that. But, and I actually had a friend who helped me record some of the footage too, because I had been traveling during part of it. So he was recording some footage that got put into it as well. And so it was like his uh, gamer tag that was on there. And nice. we were just kind of like, we're just kind of like, this is like, <laughs> this is such a small, like, n- to most people, it's just a pretty much, like, I was trying to explain it to my parents, and they were just like, you did what? I was like, all right, never mind. I was like, like whatever but uh but for us it's like oh my god this is the coolest thing ever nice uh, on a slightly related tangent I, I won't go too much into uh one of my co well two of my co-workers are in a they're, they're in a pre- pretty decently sized band like they this this is just kind of like their day job when they're not touring or whatever but one of them their their father is the singer of one of my favorite bands of all time um just generally in the Bay Area. There, there's a lot of like old thrash metal Bay Area bands, so I, I won't say specifically. But like when I first um, when I first met him, I was just like, "Oh God, please don't talk to him about how cool I think his dad is. Don't fucking mention it. Don't fucking mention." It. And so, I, like at first, it just came off as like awkward. Like I'm just going to ignore you because I don't want to make it weird. <laughs> but I, I'm very bad at navigating those situations. It's always awkward because you don't want to like 
especially when you're really big fans of they of like people or, or the things that they do, you're always like, I just want to tell you that I love you and everything you do. But if I do that, <laughs> then you're gonna think I'm weird, and then this whole interaction will be pointless. So I'm just gonna have to play it cool, even though I don't want to play it cool because internally I'm freaking out. <laughs> I mean, I kind of on a related tangent. This this like isn't really hidden because it's in an IGN video somewhere that's like hidden in the internet. But I am on video telling the producer of Devil May Cry 5 that I have seen a naked picture of Dante that's canon floating around the internet. Oh, no. <laughs> Literally on video. <laughs> and I approached him afterwards. And I was like, I hope I didn't freak you out. And he started like cackling. And he was like, oh my god, no, that picture we like actually had to do for like character remodeling purposes. He's like, trust me, you're fine. Did and he have then, fully modeled PP, or was it like yes, bald area? Yes, this is an actual canon like like concept art that they okay. had to, to get Question. Like, body done. Rower or shower? Shower. Damn. <laughs> That's his rip, dude. <laughs> and I and I and now he's mutuals with me on Twitter, and he like shares my articles that I that I've been doing, and I'm like, I hope you know that we know each other because I literally t- told you in front of everybody that I've seen a naked picture of the character that you're not my <laughs> So so yeah, I mean we all we all we all have those stories. <laughs> but um, Kyle, I guess like yeah, Godin. Um, what what's what have you been playing? What's maybe your favorite game? So I, I play a ton of Destiny, um, which oh yeah, oh yeah, played a little bit less over the last couple of months just to try to avoid some burnout. But my version of a lot less is still like twenty, thirty hours a week sometimes. I have um, been helping me understand the canon I've been missing. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's kind of like my big. Um, currently, my my hunter looks like Ronald McDonald because I was I got a new sh- <laughs> I got a new shader and I was like, oh, let me just see what this looks like. And I originally, like at the time, my character was all orange and blue, and my name was It's Nerf or Nothing, the trademark symbol, which a friend of mine had inspired. And then I was like, I, I checked out the new shader for the, the Guardian games, and I was like, oh my god, that face looks like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> this is... And every time I look at it, I just look at it and I go, oh my god. This is... like I don't know how... Because I, I, I come up with... Uh, pun names based off of my my normal username, just with my de- within my Destiny clan. So I was like, how am I ever gonna? I don't know how I top this. Like, I don't know because this is just perfect. So that's just kind of been my big. And then I play I play Football Manager, which is just because I'm a I'm a numbers nerd, and I keep telling myself like, oh, I'm gonna start near because I really loved, you know, uh, Atomida, and I really want to play this. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool, but I got it on PC, so I'm gonna wait until things are patched up a bit. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get into that a bit, but isn't like the PC version like specifically fucked up because uh, the game breaks a bit if it hit goes over sixty and there's no native mm-hmm. VSync or yeah, Limiter Automata, or... Automata had the same problem to the point where Square never got or uh, Platinum never got around to fixing it. So fans made of like a fan made patch that fixed like everything within like a month. No, within like two weeks, a fan of like a fan made patch came out that fixed everything. Platinum never did anything. <laughs> and that's it why I'm, it's happening with this one too. <laughs> Square's just like Whoop. <laughs> That's why I'm kinda weary about even getting um Resident Evil seven day one I'm not Resident Evil Seven Re- Resident Evil Village uh day one on PC just because um <laughs> j- just just, just <laughs> like contrast like <laughs> Japanese developers typically have crappier PC ports. Well Capcom is the uh the exception. Yeah. yeah, really, because like yeah, seven, two, three, Devil May Cry five, like all of those have been perfect from day one. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, they're I, probably I'm, the best PC ports I've ever played. I'm paranoid, and I love Resident Evil so much. And I'll probably just preload it on both. Or actually, no, I, I forgot. I was supposed to do a very specific shout out at the top of the show. Um, Canty on um on Twitter uh, was very generous and gifted me a copy of the, I guess the deluxe version of uh, Resident Evil Village on Steam, which also included the DLC for 7, so uh, incredible thank you to Kansi. Thank you for that. But uh, why do you love Destiny so much, Kyle? What about it speaks to you as a human being and your and your need to, to, to grind? Man, um, that's a great question because I hate it. 
most of the time. <laughs> Which I think okay, is, I think is like, that, isn't that like a Destiny yeah. fan thing though? Yeah. Like, like that's it, even me. I'm like, I love Destiny. I have it tattooed on my body, but I don't like it. <laughs> it's, it, it. It is kind of a requirement. Um, uh, for me, for me, the biggest reason, honestly, is and, I, and I've talked about this before with a lot of people. Like, I, I play games predominantly for the people that I play games with. Like, I'll play pretty much anything if I've got other friends playing it. I will try any game. I will check out anything if there's other people playing it, just because I like to play things with other people. Because I usually am just kind of hanging out here by myself, and most of my friends are virtual friends, and so it's like, hey, cool, let's let's find things to play. So Destiny is one that like. I got in with a group and I've got a really good group of people that I play with that we've all become like really good friends outside of just in the game. So that's mm-hmm. that's kind of like the biggest reason that I continue to play it a lot. But it is also like despite all of the things that Bungie continues to do, you, including the transmog thing that they just uh, announced so that they bad. managed to they they managed to take the thing everyone's complained mm-hmm. about for years, which is that oh, it's bounty grind the game and they made it more bounty grind the game. Um but they like I, I look at all those things and I get mad, but then I also go, but man, this gunplay, no game, no game feels this good. What uh what no. platform do you play on? PC. That hand cannon is nasty on PC. What? It it is, man. I so I'm I'm very bad at, at PvP things, but I've gotten I've gotten better. But getting used to like shotguns and hand cannons and things like that, because like, I used to I, I started playing on PlayStation. I played on PS4 for mm-hmm. D one. And then for the first like year of D2, and then I had maybe a little bit less. So I quit when Curse of Osiris had come out and then didn't come back. I came back with Shadow Keep, came back on PC. And that's when I really got like I had like 60 hours total. And now I have like 1500. So and all that's come <laughs> most of it's all come since, you know, Shadow Keep. But it's. Yeah, that like on console, I would I was using like terribly optimized loadouts, but I was just using scout rifles and and auto rifles because I was like, oh, I like these, cool. And now I'm like, oh, I've got to learn other things and and get better. But it is it is fun. I have I have I have more complaints than I do good things to say about it. But it's still just like I love the raids. I love the music in the raid. Like I this the new raid that came out last November. We did it. We did day one, which was really fun and got oh, that completed. Nice. And the music in that is just, I mean, like I I bought the soundtrack and sometimes we'll play it when I'm in the car, or just sitting at my desk. And it's you probably like <laughs> Destiny the same reason that I do, and I don't play it much any anymore. But I still love Destiny for the fact that it's a game where my favorite memories were in junior college playing doubles uh doing the valentine's day doubles with my roommate where she moved her console and her tv out of her room to play in the same room as me or getting together with like people online to do the raid and like dancing in circles in the middle of the tower like just like that that feeling of just coming together with like a bunch of people that you don't know at first and then like becoming like such amazing friends with them later and with Destiny 2, I was the same thing as you. I, I quit when Curse of Osiris came out because I'm like, this is just not fun and it sucks because I love Destiny. And then I, I kind of jumped back when uh when Forsaken came out. For, obviously, I jumped I jumped back and I played for, for like a while after that. And I'm getting all my lore knowledge through you now because Destiny's still doing such amazing lore things to me. But I just... It's just like the gameplay. It, I just I can't like I'll play it, and then I remembered why I didn't play it for so long was because I'm yeah. like, yes, I'm terrible, and I play games where we're doing the same thing over and over. But with Destiny, yeah, the gun the the gunplay is good, but there's just so much that I could do the same strike over and over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I, like I, I can't. Think, I think for me, um, I Destiny would totally like still be my thing if I was back in like my multiplayer playing like prime days back when like Halo Three first came out, but. Social anxiety being what it is, don't not very oh. conducive to making friends online. Um, I guess except for like maybe the last eight months or so. But um, mm. yeah, I played the crap out of Destiny One when it first came out. Had a little group of friends. Uh, did all the raids. Maybe not necessarily day one like uh, the champ here, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. And every time I had, I haven't played it on PC in like I want to say like a year at this point. 
but every once in a while I still reconsider doing it purely just because the gameplay is just freaking top notch, especially on PC. But like the only thing keeping me back is that every time I jump in, there's like a million new uh, resources to, and uh, new little minor quests. And I'm just like, oh, no, I don't like the grind part. I just want to shoot the dudes. <laughs> yeah, it's and that's like, like Sarah said, like for me, the big things that like my my best memories or the things that I like the most about Destiny are all experiences I've had with people and not specific things that i've done like we've got a bunch of of inside jokes for different things and Mm -hmm. we have different different memories that we have of doing things and and some fun times that we've had even even all the way back to d1 my very first raid that i did with some friends uh that that i knew in person and one of the guys in the group that i didn't know though called me kevin and so the guy leading the group was a, a good friend of mine just decided to roll with it because I didn't say anything because I'm like, I, I don't want ever. I don't know. You guys have never done this. You're teaching me. I don't, I don't want you to uh, whatever. I just want to do this. And so, so so they just kept calling. So my buddy keeps calling me Kevin. So for about a year and a half, the other people that didn't know me swore that my name was Kevin. So when I was interacting in the Facebook group that we had, they thought I was someone completely different. <laughs> <laughs> and they were wondering who this Kevin, like, because the Kevin guy was never around uh, in in the group. He was just playing, but I was always around in the group and never playing. And then finally, they eventually, like, like I just assumed they all knew, and so so did my buddy. And then we just kind of realized, oh no, they they didn't realize. <laughs> but so now I've got like a completely different group here that that I play with now, and it's it's great. And we do, we said we've got some guys who love to. We did we did Deep Stone Crypt three man. Uh, at one point, which was really fun, we we play trials, which I'm terrible at. People carry me, and I just drink a lot and do terrible at it, which is super fun. Um, but it's just it's just fun, and like it is it is fun t- to play. It's not fun. I don't enjoy the grind. There are people I know that do enjoy the grind, but the actual gameplay is really fun, and there is good content. I think this season was better than most of the the last few seasons have been, and I think up until this transmog thing, they had been really moving in the right direction. It's like, hey, you're actually making good decisions. You're doing things that, that I like. And then that's that, which I'm sure they'll end up walking back at some point. But I would say if there's a time to try to get back into it, I would say now is probably not a bad time. Yeah, I was just talking to my friend about this. I said I was playing something and it reminded me of when the loot cave first happened. That was and a beautiful was time. Those were some of my favorite moments in Destiny because if I remember, you needed four people to get the loot cave to work. So you would just find three random people standing there who didn't know it, e- each other, who would just emote, like, wave at each other because they all knew that they were there for the same thing. And I would just spend five hours just with these three random-ass people just shooting into this cave the whole time. Wait, do, do you guys... Leaving. And just waving and then going off away. But I did want to bring up, I remember when the Baltic Glass came up, because that was my favorite Destiny meme ever, where you would play, I remember I did the Baltic Glass till three in the morning, like the day it came out, I beat it, and all I got was a stupid shader, and it became a meme between me and all of my friends, to where someone's like, what did you get? I got a shader, as everyone just gets a gun, or like everyone gets like a really cool armor armor piece, and it's like, Sarah, what'd you get? And I just remember I was so exhausted, and I just went... I can turn my armor purple, and everyone's at like, least you'll look ah. cool. It wasn't even a good looking purple. <laughs> so I heard about it, and it's just like that's my favorite parts of Destiny is the stuff like that happening, or when I mean this isn't really a spoiler, or when Cade Six died, and outside of E3 that that year, people built that little shrine that had instant Robin in front of it, and someone had put Cade's picture in a in a frame, and someone had put a plush a plush chicken on there, like. Just the community to me is literally my all-time favorite part of Destiny. And like Kyle mentioned earlier, people who like Destiny, you also don't like Destiny. Like oh, yeah. it's like it's like it's sort of like a thing. You have I've, to I've... say, oh yeah, Destiny's great. Yes, I have a Destiny tattoo. Warlocks are great, but I hate it. <laughs> I feel like that love-hate relationship is like so central to the Destiny experience. Like everyone knows that feeling. Well, because the game has always had those ebbs ebbs and flows of it's really, really great. And then it goes back down again. I, I remember back in back Destiny. I remember back in Destiny 1 where, um, I don't know, this is like maybe the first couple months. 
where you you just had to grind for materials before you could even uh, really get into stuff. I don't remember what the exact stuff was, but it kind of resulted in just like going on patrols across the map, just like finding little treasure boxes to uh, get those specific materials. I'm like, I yeah, I need to do that for like eight hours before I can be strong enough to do the raid. That was the worst. It was a bad time. Getting strong enough to do the raid, and then the raid's like, here's some like indestructible eye eyeballs that cannot look at you, or else it starts a twenty second timer to when everybody dies, and it's like just make a break for it. Everybody just survive. Like we can make it there in under twenty seconds if we just survive. <laughs> like God, that was oh my God! Just all the memories are just coming back to doing the raids at like two in the morning. And just being like, I've done it. I can never do it again. Like, I never have to do this again. And just getting that trophy. And then, like, showing it off to, like, all your friends. Like, I beat the ring. And everyone's like, no. Uh, God, that those were the days, man. One last question before we move on to the news. And this is a very important question. And Mesa, Mesa wait. Mesa, have you played uh, Destiny? Not really. I've only vaguely touched it once or twice okay you're you're still obligated to answer this as well because <laughs> i know sarah and i are in agreement about this kyle what class do you main hunter Boo. <laughs> i forget i forget what the classes are but the i'm a warlock main man let's go a warlock yeah sarah, that's dab it. with me let's go <laughs> also i feel like again i feel like i can never escape it Bad spring break tattoo choice, man. <laughs> was just like, let's get the destiny symbol. The class I have, thousand hours. Yeah, that's dope. I, I, I would destiny int- again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say though, to I mean, out this season I've not played as much. So it's been different, but every other season I play all three. Hunter was like the one I've played the most because it's the one I started with. But I would play all three every week, do all my pinnacles, do the raid every you know three times, whatever, and do all that. So I do play all of them, and I'm competent on all of them although baconator in chat and anybody i play with will tell you i can't jump on anything that's not a hunter i am just i the running joke is if we do a raid that has like any jumping segment like when we do deep stone crib there's a section midway through where if i'm not on my hunter i will go to orbit and i will wait for them <laughs> to get through it because otherwise i'm just dying over and over and over again and it's so frustrating because i just i'm terrible at it and I just get like I'll get hit by something and I can't correct or I overcorrect and oh it's it's awful. I, I feel like it. once you've played a game for like so long, you get so used to like every little tiny detail of like how they move and how they interact with the world that when you even slightly change that, everything just feels off and it's mm-hmm. Titan jumps are gross, I'll say that. Titans are the worst chads ever, and I will not take the statement back. Actually, you know what? I think I think I posted on Twitter or something. Um Hunters jump. Uh, warlocks glide and titans yeet hey man warlocks finally got a wizard staff this last x pack took them long enough <laughs> like we've been face wizards this whole time and the game's like you want sword it's like no <laughs> how this works <laughs> like you want fire sword it's like no this isn't i mean it's cool and i can rest myself <laughs> but it's cool i'll take it but yeah it's, but it's not a wizard more. staff <laughs> And then, and then the game's like, fine, you get a wizard staff, but it's for the darkness subclass. And I'm like, fire wizard staff? I'm like, I'm like please. Plus, I, right. mean, I think Destiny's missing really quick, because I think they're missing support classes, but that's just my own personal opinion, because they're an MMO, but... Like, I, will, I will say, I was pretty sad when they took away the resurrect from Warlocks from D1 to D2. Oh, I was so pissed. <laughs> I mean, technically... <laughs> If you're a fire warlock, one of your abilities is you can do that awesome, like, self-res yourself and the memories that I have of scaring the shit out of people in the Crucible, of just resing myself directly in front of them. <laughs> just watching them, like, scramble is so much fun. This will literally be the last thing I say, but it, I love doing that in Destiny 1 if you if you use the, uh, I forget what they're called, the, the sticky grenades, because it just gave you unlimited of them, and you're just tossing them in every tiny little corner, and it's just a massacre, and I loved it. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to the news. Um, Blizzard announced via blog post that Jeff Kaplan, the man, the myth, the meme, who is the most famous, sat in front of a burning fire for like seven hours, just staring at the screen, and people <laughs> thought it was fake until he moved. <laughs> yeah. Um, who is who's most 
who's most famous for being Overwatch's director, has left the company. Uh, Kaplan has 19 years of Blizzard tenure under his belt, who served as a World of Warcraft quest designer before being promoted to director. Uh, filling Kaplan's position is Alan, uh, Alan, I'm sorry, Aaron Keller, an 18-year Blizzard veteran that has previously worked alongside Kaplan on both Overwatch and World of Warcraft. Uh, Keller notes that he has, quote, no pretenses about filling Jeff's shoes, but that he is honored to carry the torch forward on Overwatch 2. Uh, Keller also notes that Overwatch 2's development is steadily moving along. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not necessarily crazy invested in Blizzard as a company overall. Like, the, the game of theirs I've played the most would be Overwatch. And, and even then, I'm kind of, like, on and off. Like, I enjoy it, but I'm not, like, crazy super into it. Never browse that that category of some websites. Uh, <laughs> um Kyle's yes, maybe, <laughs> hey, maybe maybe they'll get me back once they tell me why Lucio's there. Yeah. Um can I, I can I can I hello? I, I, yeah. Uh I like playing as Harambe, that that's good. But um go ahead, sir. Um so this kind of always ticks me off when someone leaves Blizzard and people are like, the company's going downhill. These people worked on the same games for 20 plus years. If they want to leave and do something else, let them leave and do something else. Like, it's not, like, plus people leaving a company doesn't always mean that something's going bad. Three fourths of the time, they just want to leave because they want to go do something else. It's like when people, when, when, when Chris Metzen retired from Blizzard, people were like, oh, what? the Blizzard's got to go downhill because, because Chris isn't here anymore. And it's like, no, Chris has been at that company since the company basically started. Like, well, I he feel wanted like... to go and do his own thing. Like, it's baffling to me that people see this and instantly think that something's doing bad. Like, this isn't Bioware, people. Like, most often than not, people are leaving because they just don't, because they just want to go do some something else. Like, if I was working on Overwatch for the past 10 goddamn years, I'd be like, God, I want to do something else. Like, I want to want to go and do something else i feel like it's even two-pronged and like i'll absolutely agree on the point that no one should ever be mad at someone like leaving a company because they want to pursue something personally especially if you're at the same place for 19 years that is a long fucking time yeah Um, i I know a lot of i know a lot of people that have worked on um on bigger games uh they get tired of the crunch they get tired of the of the scale they want to go back down to something smaller um there's a chapter in uh, Jason Schreier's book, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, um, going over Bruce Straley. Um, oh, I forget his exact name. He, he was one of the directors of The Last of Us and um, Uncharted 4 and just like kind of the hell like, like he even went through. Like he had to rent an apartment that was across the street from the studio just because he couldn't even be bothered to go home most nights. Um, so so I, I would definitely chalk this out to like maybe even some burnout issues. But I, and I guess also, it, a lot of recent Blizzard stuff hasn't even been the old school Blizzard people. The newest World of Warcraft X, X, X pack, yes, it had like veteran Blizzard people on it, but the story in it was like Christy, Christy Goldie's first time the writing for the base game itself, and not like the books or anything. And a lot of the like gr- level des- d- designers and like world designers and stuff were people who were being promoted from like interns or like people new hired to the to the company like old and this is gonna sound incredibly controversial and i feel saying this but old blizzards kind of getting take not taken over but like the newer people are coming in and showing that they can make blizzard games just as blizzard did but for the new generation and like the new the new wow x x packs and wow classic still has original world of warcraft people on it it's like i feel like people like because it's happening a lot, people are scared that the, the company's going down downhill when it's like you're still playing WoW, you're still playing over Overwatch. I highly doubt that Overwatch 2 is going to be a disaster. Well, it, like, and just in that regard to touch on, I, th- I feel like it's a bit of a two-pronged approach where um, correlation doesn't prove causation. So e- even if people are leaving, that doesn't necessarily mean whatever upcoming projects are going to be crap. As you said, there's new talent coming up with new ideas. Um, that can ultimately lead to a better product than a, if it was even older talents. Um, but, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff going on in the back end with Blizzard, mostly perpetuated by Activision, that is pushing a lot of the old guard out, making weird decisions uh, that are affecting the games. 
Um, I like if it's anything, I would maybe put it at the feet of that. But I, I think people rushing to say like, "Oh, Overwatch Two is fucked." I, I think that's a very short sighted um, way to look at it. Well, I, mm-hmm. I mean, I would I would assume if if you're a veteran who's been doing, who's been a part of this, whether it's a Blizzard or any studio like that, for a really long time, at that point, that's your baby. You're not going to leave that in bad hands. So even if it is things, because I do believe there, there there has to be some level of, and we really don't like Activision. <laughs> like some of this stuff is really frustrating, but it's not enough to immediately push you to go, okay, well then I'm just out and we'll just let it crash and burn and then it'll prove that I'm right. But it's kind of more of a, okay, these things are frustrating to me. I don't like these things. This is hard for me to work under because this isn't what I'm, used to or what i what i what i come from or whatever or where things where we wanted things to go whatever and now there are people who are in a position who who did come up in that culture or in that mindset or, or whatever and they're capable of making things really well so i feel like okay good i can finally step away and not have to worry about the legacy because if you if you spend 19 years with with a with a studio or with, with anywhere you don't want to leave and then watch it fail. You want to leave and then watch it to continue to do well because you want to be able to go like, hey, look, we built something that lasted and it's still doing great. And, you know, another 20 years from now, you can go, hey, like I was a part of that. Look, at that's awesome. You don't want to look and you're reading about it in books about, you know, one of the greatest disasters in history of, of, of video game developers. Right. So I and not that I'm pretending to know anything about obviously the, the actual circumstances about this, but I, I do think it. It is very likely that some of the decision to leave probably had to do with that there was at some level probably some like, hey, you know, not love an Activision and also just a level of, hey, it'd be nice to go do something new. And I can feel comfortable doing that because there's people here who are are stepping up and, and bringing in kind of new talent, training up new talent who are doing a great job. Well, that's mm-hmm. sort of when so for people who don't know, Rod Ferguson is the new director on Diablo 4. And for people who don't know, he's the guy that saved the first Gears. Gears of War would have never gotten finished if Rod Ferguson hadn't been brought on. and was like, okay, we need to get this stream streamlined. We need to get this done. And Rod had been on record saying that he would never leave the Gears franchise until the people who were working on it had it in a place where he felt comfortable to go, you guys have it. You guys got this. I feel comfortable leaving. And Rod left. Rod left, like, I think a year after Gears 5 came came out, or like a year and a half. And people were freaked out that the Gears franchise was, like, done. And Rod came out and said, I would have never left if I didn't think that these people had it. That they knew what Gears of War was, and they would take it further and just continue making this franchise as good as it can be. And people were baffled when he moved on to work on Diablo. Like, he is the head director of Diablo. And people were saying, oh, they did this because Diablo's a, a disaster. They like need they like need Rod to fix it. Well, Gears was never a disaster. Gears just had was so ambitious and needed someone to reel it in to get it out and make it what it what what it was. And like uh, the the entire fan base was like, look, this is what Rod did with with Gears. Why are we freaking out that Diablo might be a disaster if Rod, who literally what Kyle just just said, moved on from this this new generation team has this? I can leave this franchise that I helped to form in the hands of the new people while I go work on some s- something else. And it's just like it. I and it feels like this always happens with Blizzard. Like I'm like guys, calm down. Like like yes. Nine nine point one of Shadowlands isn't out yet. Yes, it's in PTR. Overwatch two isn't is not yet. We've seen nothing. They they update Diablo quarterly with like brand new content. Like, can people just like calm down, please? Like, as someone who is like sitting in the World of Warcraft chair and is a giant Blizzard person, can people please calm down? Like, I'm not <laughs> defending Activision. I'm not defending the company. I'm just like, look, not everything is the is like DefCon five. Like, like not everything is off. Oh, fuck, everything's ruined. Like, no. <laughs> Mesa, well, do you have any thoughts? Um, well, I mean, like, yeah, like, how long has, was he at Blizzard again? 19 years. 19 years. If, if, he had stayed, if he had stayed two more years, his tenure could have had a drink. Like, like, they're, like... I can't imagine living in a home for 19 years, let alone <laughs> working at the same company. I, I'm I'm sure he's just I'm sure he probably um I wouldn't be surprised, especially with um 
uh, a lot of the backlash for Overwatch 2 as well, that he was just kind of tired <laughs> as well. Yeah, he, um, he probably is just looking for uh, the long lost uh, eight hours of sleep that he probably hasn't had for most of those 18 years or 19 years, rather. So, yeah, I don't I don't think this is a I don't necessarily think that this is some sort of sign about uh, the, the, the turmoil bubbling under the surface of Activision Blizzard. I think it's just just Dude's tired. he let, is time. Let Jeff Kaplan sleep. Let the yeah, sleep rest. <laughs> I, I will say that to maybe even just cap this off in his little um his little farewell notes in the blog post. Mm-hmm. I did I did find it was funny. It was all in lowercase. There's not a single yeah. capitalized letter in there. Mm-hmm. He the did man, post a very the sweet meme. Reddit post as well on r slash over Overwatch that mm-hmm. actually kind of made me get misty eyed. Like, dude, dude cares about the community, guys. He's not leaving because he hates you. He he he, he, he like cares about people. He's just leaving to rest. <laughs> to to mm-hmm. maybe get another reaction out of Kyle here. Do you think he's ever seen any of those videos on those websites? Yes, absolutely, yes. absolutely. It's impossible not <laughs> yes. to. I mean, honestly, it's a, honestly you have to use that as like a like a barometer of like, all right, how good is this character? Okay, good, good. All right, dope. <laughs> yeah, I think when they're when they're when they're trying to decide, you know, like what characters do we do we put more of an emphasis on? Like, do we want to kind of make more prominent if we want to make it so they're it's this is a character people are going to use more. They go, all right, well, what people are they making videos of more? You know, what's more popular? What's the main corn hub post? Or 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 if they would like a character to be more popular. He's going, hey, maybe we should uh, get some people to make some videos of them. Or make it a little more... <laughs> no, Blizzard more wouldn't make know. people. They like, they like um, suit it's everybody. More a, it's more oh, of a Randy no, pitch for move. Wait, that's yeah, more of a Randy pitch for move. Yeah, see, the, see, no, no, no. So here's the thing. They're, they're a lot smarter. So they don't make them. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all like under the table, right? And so, and and the reason they were suing people who are doing it is so they could have this plausible deniability of we would never, how <laughs> dare you accuse? We would never. But we're glad you're watching stuff about our game. But we would never. <laughs> I gotta say that that's a hell of a marketing strategy. Yeah. Get- Look, it works. I mean, I mean, if if you if you go on those like interesting trend blog posts that those sites put up, and they're like trending video game characters, there's always an Overwatch mm-hmm. character on there. There is always an Overwatch character on there. That shit never changes. I mean, <laughs> I I think the reason why Overwatch completely blew Battleborn out of the water is because Battleborn didn't have its own category. I think it did. I swear to God, I think it did for like a hot minute. Well, well there's, there's, that, like, oh. there's that Reddit that everyone clearly saw Randy made himself. Uh, oh, my God, <laughs> I remember that. Oh, Randy. I remember oh, no. that. Oh. Randy, Randy, Randy. Uh, I, I think you've unraveled a conspiracy here, Kyle, and I, I think it's very mm. legit. Yeah, I look, until they say otherwise, I'm rolling with it. This is fact. Hmm. <laughs> Big facts, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This, this is big brain move, galaxy brain. Um, it's what I would do if I was in charge, which is why I'm not in charge of anything. I, I think you well, should be. <laughs> I I disagree, but you know, if anyone would like to hire me for some brilliant marketing strategies, I look. I I've only got the one idea, but it works with pretty much everything. It, it, if it's the best idea that you that that's all you need. Exactly. It's true. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. It's true. Don't fear um, the man with the <laughs> who's practiced a thousand ideas. <laughs> fear the man who's practiced one idea a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was not expecting this. Uh, I love you, Kyle. Um, has anyone else here played... Um, Resident Evil Village's new demo that was live yesterday. Nope, covering nope. my ears, boys. I, no, um, I uh, I had to go to the bathroom, so I missed my windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, can we That's just talk so about like that dumb. limited availability? So it's dumb. like oh, and the way that they explained it, PlayStation owners get it first, like a couple days early, and I'm just, I, remember, mm. I remember just staring at the screen, and I'm like, how does this make any sense? Like, I, I don't. 
I don't think there's any real justification for it aside from they want like their peak viewership numbers um Ooh. like as high as possible. So this is, this is just all like a marketing well, thing. So I was talking to my my uh, my uh, partner slash boyfriend and what he thinks is because when the Resident Evil oh. 2 demo got released slash that, needed there? I, I don't think so. I did, may or may not be dating. <laughs> you may or may, may not. not be dating. Uh, <laughs> your partner may or may not be your boyfriend. You may or may not. Yeah, 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 um, when the Resident Evil 2 demo, you know how that demo was like 60 minutes? Well, PC players were able to hack into that and take that timer off. And I did that. Able to travel, haha, pretty much able to travel like the entire police station just unattended. So he, so he was under the impression that Capcom saw that was like, oh fuck, because maybe the entire village is in that demo, <laughs> and they went shit, give people like thirty minutes, <laughs> give I was them like thirty, and we're good. They'll never be able to like hack hack into it. I was talking so, to um, I was talking to Corey about it a little bit earlier. He couldn't make it onto the show. He's going to birthday party of some sorts, I believe. Birthday, birthday. His birthday is coming up. It's going to be on. Not March, uh, May 3rd, which is, birthday. when is that? Next Monday. So happy early birthday to Corey. Um, yeah, we were talking about it, and there's not really any story stuff in these demos. And what, and what the, the takeaway me and him both had is that these are taking areas from the game, but remixing like the item placements from what's going to be in the base game. Uh, like the area you go through in this castle demo, it's the exact reverse of the Maiden demo. And like things are in completely different locations, there's different vibes. So in that regard, it's kind of like the the peak of what I would want a demo to be, and that is giving you the experience of it, but it's not literally just a vertical slice that's exactly the same mm -hmm. um, as, as that you would be playing. Because I that's why I traditionally don't like demos. Like when I when I um when I play tested Horizon, I think like a year and a half before it came out, I you literally may or played. May not have play tested Horizon. <laughs> I, that NDA is up, up and over. Um, <laughs> but um, so I, I played like literally from the beginning up until you go to Meridian, and that's like a good eight hour chunk. So when I when I first boot up the the actual game, I was just like, oh yeah, I, I have already done this. Granted, it it runs better now, but and then pe yeah. people aren't people aren't purple T poses. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Which is a shame because that would be great. Yeah, yeah. One, one could argue that is the that is the superior experience. That that is the authorial attempt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I like the way that they approached this demo. Um, Sarah, I, I know you like you were kind of opposed to starting it for your own reasons. Do you want to go to that? Yeah. So um, I I I watch all of the Resident Evil directs that that Capcom has been having. And my favorite part, now I've been playing Resident Evil for pretty much half of my life. Like, this this series, it means so much to me. It's how me and my may or may not be boyfriend can either confirm Slash partner. I met. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, I've just had so many really boyfriend. good <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I love you. Um, it's just like, it's, it's how me and a lot of my friends became friends was through her, Resident Evil, and I've always loved the idea of going through a Resident Evil game blind, like not knowing anything. And I've seen almost every village trailer, and a part of me is that at at this point, I'm just like, you know what, I'm done. Like I just want to wait till my collector's edition gets gets delivered. I want to put the game in. I just want to like enjoy Village. And I played that Maiden demo, and I loved it. It was super cool, super duper spooky. I love those types of demos. Now, the types of demos that they just released, where it's like, here, ju just explore the village, just explore the castle. To me, that's like in my head, if, if Resident Evil 4 was released today, and they put out a demo that's like, here, explore the village center, and I'm like, this is just going to spoil that really awesome running for your life segment. That we're just running in circles, screaming, just like ah, there's like, like a chainsaw guy's behind you, like get mm -hmm. over here. It's like no, like I I want to go into that blind. I want to go in, and like yeah, I get that it's like vertical chunks, but at the same time, I want to step into that castle for the first time blind. I, I want to see everything for like the first time. I want to go into that village <clears throat> as <clears throat> uh, 
as blind as possible. I don't want to like be like, okay, here's the village being I, attacked by werewolves. I, I feel yeah. like in a way that's actually that actually makes it more mysterious slash terrifying for me. Is that yes? You do you do you do have this brief little experience with this remixed vertical slice. Like uh, let, let's take um. Resident Evil 2's uh, hardcore mode for ins- not even hardcore the uh, the second run, um, w- which is basically like it's the same thing, same environment, whatever. And the second run or in the first game, you don't find Mister X until like l- let's say like forty percent through the game. You know where he spawns. You're like, okay, that's fine. Second run when he just pops up around that fucking corner out of nowhere. You're like. Oh no, that that's not supposed to happen. Why is he here? Like that was one of my favorite moments of that entire game. And it's just because it takes your expectations and things are just in different places where they weren't um before. And yeah, it kind of like, just does, it kind of revolves around that aspect for the yeah, second like, run. Personally, and I'm gonna give a really shitty opinion here, seeing those gifts of like big tall vampire m- mommy like coming through the door and chasing Bum. you, I wish I had never seen that. I want to experience that without having seen anything. And the fact that the internet, of course, did what the internet does. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm not going to experience this blind and not be like, ah, oh, fuck. Like I did when like Baker came around the corner and was like, come here, pretty, pretty boy. And it's like, ah, oh. like I'm not going to be able to experience big, tall vampire, like, like kneeling through the door to just be like, hello, Ethan. Instead, I'm seeing the gif every, everywhere. And I'm like, oh, great, there's that part spoiled for me because the internet can't keep being horny to itself for five minutes. Sarah, you are in no place to talk on that. Listen, leave me alone. <laughs> I wish I wasn't spoiled on the fact that Chris is in this and his shirt is so tight, his tits are just ready to explode out of it. I Like, I wish, <laughs> like, just it makes me so mad that, of course, the internet did what the internet does and just spread that gif every, everywhere. Because now I'm kind of mad that, because I didn't think that she was going to be like, Baker. I didn't think that she was going to chase us. I thought that we were just going to have awesome like boss mm-hmm. fights where she slowly mutates into a giant monster, which I still think is going to happen. But now I know that she's pulling a Jack Baker on us and like following us through the through the castle. And now I'm just like, oh, now where's the like now the whole like mood is killed because I know that this is going to happen. When I think the best part of a Resident Evil game is not knowing that something's going going to happen. Like how in, I think it was Resident Evil 2 or 3 that started doing this. How sometimes when you would open doors and zombies would break through the door first and just scare the shit out of, out of you. Like going through that blind was some of the coolest memories I've had as a, as a kid. Because I didn't know that that could happen. You see the door opening animations as like a moment to breathe. Instead, you go to open the door and the zombies just come like crawling out of the dark and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, I wasn't expecting that to happen. But now with the power of the internet and the power of Horny, now I know that she's going to follow you throughout 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 the castle. And I'm like, I wish I would have seen this blind. I wish I would have I, known this blind. I think it comes down to two completely valid but separate uh, schools of thought mm-hmm. for, for horror and just like I don't know, you can extrapolate it to writing, whatever. It's that, like, on, on one hand, like, the horror could be, like, things that you don't know are coming, and it's that kind of anticipation. But on the other end, knowing that something is coming up and knowing that it is still going to be terrifying, that you're going to have to eventually deal with it is, like, its own kind of horror in that regard. But um, See, I guess I'll that, go to- that That kills horror for me. Knowing what's going to happen kills the horror. And just knowing that she's going to follow us and, like, Jack baker us throughout the part of of the castle i'm just like oh now i know that she's gonna pop up at some point and i'm gonna walk into the castle and just be ready for her to like pop out Mm -hmm. so it's just like i have mixed feelings on it i i will do a brief little tangent then i'll go but more into the demo uh the build-up in the last of us 2 specifically the theater i think that buildup is good. Yeah. That buildup is really fucking good. And then ha- <laughs> like ha- having that time bomb, That what's the expression? Why am I blanking on it? Um, H- Hancock's bomb under the table, where you know this thing is going to happen, and you're eventually going to have to revisit that. I think yeah. that's uh, yeah, that's just that's just perfect. And like in some, like obviously there's a, there's a different um, level achieved between these two things. It's not exactly the same, but to go into the demo, there's not really much story stuff to, to tell. It's just mainly gameplay things. Um, I, the second one is substantially shorter than the uh, first one. So, so the first one I finished in like 28 minutes and I was still like kind of trying to 
go through it pretty fast. Um, finished the second one in 14 minutes. Uh, had a lot of combat. There was like maybe, uh, I think like at least eight enemies or something like that. Uh, it gives you a lot of ammo, but you still have to get headshots. And maybe I just have potato aim when, when I'm playing <laughs> and uh, with a game that doesn't have like a bunch of aim assist. Like Halo, I'm fine. Call of Duty, I'm fine. But like Resident Evil um, mm-hmm. builds, I'm just struggling to get headshots. But one little cheap uh, tactic I learned if you just, and if instead of just like aiming down and then moving the reticule to to aim at them and shoot them if after each shot you just re-aim it snap it there's a slight snap to their head so that could be useful um there's on the fly crafting from resources that don't even take up space in the attache case nice yeah nice. so I'm down I'm down for that I'm I, for I, that shit. I had such a bad freaking like OCD with it in um in Resident Evil form, just like I'm constantly rearranging stuff, playing Tetris with it. I'm like, ah. But um Don't worry, you'll 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 get to do that in VR soon. Mm-hmm. Um the the Duke character, the character that sells you weapons, items, upgrades, and whatnot. Um it, it's it's pretty extensive. It's it's more than what even the merchant was doing in four. Um, with the added bonus that he's also talking kind of explicitly about story details like he's someone nice. that you can actually converse with he's not just the merchant just with what are you buying i'll is buy it, it at a high it price like, is it you can ask him about stuff or does he like just drop stories from what stuff? i got from the demo like you go up to him and he has like a couple little lines i would imagine that they're different for each time you encounter him um okay. one one fun tidbit uh, that cory got him to say that i didn't mm. um he, he specifically asked what are you buying strange not in the voice but he asks nice. you and then he says like oh don't mind me i'm just quoting a fr- uh one of my old friends yes give that shit to me give that resident evil extended universe to me let's go <laughs> um when i was fighting the enemies um you can't really brute force it, especially when there's a lot of them just like kind of circling around you like you have to use your environments to uh to funnel them in- funnel them in so if i wasn't killing enemies fast enough i would just like Full ass, just like pull a 180, run back, um, close some doors. And um, so it, it definitely reminds me of of strategies I would use in Resident Evil 4 where you can't just fight like five dudes in front of you. You got to funnel them and take them off one by one, especially since you have um, you, you, me and Corey both bought the shotgun, but we kind of use that as a last resort uh, weapon. But but utilizing the range on your weapons and uh, funneling is is uh imperative to not dying um blocking seems even more powerful than um than resident evil 7 like in 7 you would mitigate some damage you'd like maybe take half um just because you're not as agile as you are in the um in the third person resident evil games the resident evil 2 and 3 remakes um so you you kind of have to let dudes slash at you but you block like I want to say like maybe ninety percent of the damage you would take otherwise. It's uh it's pretty damn useful. And I was playing on standards. I don't know if that's going to be buffed or nerfed in the uh in the game once it re- releases proper. Um, yeah, I think that's basically I have on it. Does anyone have any questions or just wait for the game to come out? I'm just going to wait for the game to come out because I was waiting for this game since they announced it last year and if I don't <laughs> get werewolf oh. res, I'm going to be very angry. I, I forgot, Sarah. I, I will not spill any details oh. whatsoever. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I told Corey and Blaine last week, I know the answer if werewolf Chris is in the game. Oh no. I know the answer. My friend knows, knows too and he's like, I just don't want you to get your hopes up and I'm like, no, you're supposed to be a good boyfriend and tell me that's okay, babe. Werewolf Chris is gonna happen and you are gonna be so excited. I'm like, you're supposed to do that. See, you're supposed to get my hopes I, up. I was being impartial. He's yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna say anything. I, I, I'm allowed to dream. I'm allowed to dream. <laughs> Um, and yes, Blade, I know me saying Chris should be a werewolf kind of makes me a furry. Leave me alone. Embrace it, sir. Ah! <laughs> Never. Um, Kyle, so Resident Evil's like totally not your thing whatsoever. Um, God, no. Is, is there anything specific that like stands out just like, nah, just totally not interested in it? I am a complete coward. Man, I get scared so easily. I... <laughs> So I, 
watched friends play Resident Evil 7. And Yeah, that was a bad one. I <laughs> Oh, okay. oh no, well then I'll, I'll let you slide on that for real quick basically like Kyle. Man, no, no. I like five um, five minutes in was like I had to leave the room. I was like, "All right, I'm uh, yeah. I'll see you guys." <laughs> I'm mm. I'm not, and I remember like I know even when the uh, when the PT I know it's not Resident Evil, but when the when the PT demo was out, uh, a bunch of the, my roommates and I we downloaded it and we played it one night. We had some people over, we were playing through it, but we had some like leaky or creaky pipes in the apartment. Oh no! And, <laughs> and I swear to god i didn't sleep for like two weeks because anytime i would like start to fall asleep and hear them i would freak out because i would be like what the hell <laughs> is that because i just i i don't i don't i don't know nope, i don't i don't enjoy i don't enjoy being frightened i don't like things jumping out at me is the biggest thing i like things that are just creepy is fine like i, I watched um what was it quiet place Mm-hmm. Right, and I and I liked that movie because it's not really it's not like a jump horror thing. But anytime there's things that jump out at you or they're chasing you or things like that, I'm like that just man that scares me, and then my heart starts like going nuts. I'm like, man, that is that is not fun so, for me. Do you do you find is that? It, sorry, is it first person horror that that gets you, or is third person something you can handle easier? This is this is just curious. So, like, if you were set in front question. of a horde, if you were set, because I, because of my fight, fight or flight, like, brain always being const- constantly on, I can't turn it off. The first person gets me a lot harder because I can't see around me. I can't see to, like, either side of my character because you're just looking at what's in front of you. So that fucks me up because I'm always, like, tense and ready to scream so beating resident evil 7 was actually like a badge of honor for me because i didn't quit it half and halfway through because the anxiety that i got while playing third person horror games it depends something like dead space scares the fuck out of me because they're popping out of everywhere while resident evil 4 they at least make noises before you see them you're gonna hear hasta la stero whatever the fuck it goes to resident evil 4 that's probably really terrible like you are gonna well, hear that crazy. first huh Nothing, sorry. Please continue. Uh, I, no, I got like, you, Mesa. I got you. Wait, what? No, no, say it. Oh, this is one of the things that says Amore es Vidil. Yes. <laughs> like, well, like, the point is, you hear it first. Obviously, Resident Evil 4, you hear them. Like, you hear them most mm-hmm. of the time before you see them. So it's like, you at least know that something's coming, coming at you. So can you handle third person, Kyle? And it's just not first person that you can do because it because it's the fact you can't see around you. So I I can I can definitely do third person better. So like, but it's still not it's not so like control for example. I've not been able to finish control because I'm on the dia, the the second DLC I believe, and you're oh, dealing with the, the weird tall tall monster. And I the fuck out of me. And so I've just I've just not been able to to get myself to go back and finish it because it was just so like my heart rate was spiking playing through it, and I'm just like I need to. If I, I need may to play. help, go into the accessibility menu, turn invincibility on. That. That well, DLC becomes so incredibly easy so, and not so, scary anymore. <laughs> so, well, so I, I did that because um, someone had recommended that to me. So I did that. But for me, it's just the like, the creature holy itself? shit, it just it just popped up right in front of me. It's, yeah, it's not like, that's it's, terrifying. It's, yeah. So that's for me, it's really just so I don't I don't I just don't like things popping out at me or the or the like potential of something popping out at me. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, when I played The Last of Us 2, there's there's a scene where you're in the water and that one i was like holding my breath the entire time because i i have a fear of sharks because i had something happen in in my childhood that i i don't love sharks and i'm sitting there the whole time like this is a moment where i feel like a shark is totally going to come out because that that that's so i'm sitting here like just the thought of something potentially popping out at me already has me on edge and then if it were to pop out at me just freaks me out creepy things though like doesn't bot if it's just like you see the thing very clearly and it's just creepy that's totally fine like that's not the stuff that it's just things popping out at me and it's not even so much that it 
like it's i don't know it's 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 really just that it like my heart rate just spikes up like crazy and it takes me forever no. to settle I think that it, down I, and I, I don't love that i think it's perfectly rational to even have that i would hope that no one's ever tried to shame you for that no and it's like another thing is because i've talked to my therapist i've stuff from a minutia of mental health problems but i love horror like i love true crime i love horror i love horror horror games like that kind of thing she's explained it to me as people with ex- people with anxiety we can handle how much we can intake and how much we can't take so when it comes to something like horror we can push ourselves to that line of enjoying something scary but we always have that chance to stop it. We always have that chance to pause it or to turn it off or to be like, all right, I can't handle this tonight. Like this is enough that I can, that I can do. So and this is to like people listening. If anyone's ever interested in like horror, but they can't handle horror itself. I always recommend starting with something actually like control. Control's a great, especially with its second DLC. Cause the, cause the tall creature controls a great, chance to test how well you can handle horror in something that's not horror related because like that that's how i've always explained it to friends is if you want to get into horror because there's such a really great horror medium especially gaming out out there playing games that have horror elements in them that aren't exactly horror themed gonna go back to like a bunch of episodes ago and i discussed that one mission in watchdogs legion games that Mm -hmm. aren't supposed to have horror in them that have horror elements in them is a great way to see what you're point of no of no return is because then you could be like okay this is what fucks me up this is what doesn't fuck me up so it's so like we so especially for you control was a great thing for you because you're and resident Evil 7 and pt because you're like oh i don't like things jumping out at me the monster design creepy totally fine when it's jumping out that's when i can't handle stuff so it's like honestly, with that, you know what you can and can't handle. So finding horror games that just re- rely on like creepy elements and not like jumps, jump scares or anything, that's a great starting point for for you if you ever want to dive head head first into horror. Starting with the creepy stuff and then working your way up to okay, maybe I can handle jump scares. I'm gonna give Alien I- Isolation a try. Or maybe I'm going to try Resident Evil 7 finally. I mean, I would even push back further that if if you have issues with horror movies, that games are infinitely worse in that regard and that you're you're directly having to confront those by yourself. So we'll see you will see with games. You have a pause button just like with films. So if you know that you can't handle something like bash, bash that pause and 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 that's it. You're like, that's it. That's how much I can handle that's it it's all Absolutely. mental things <laughs> mesa th- thoughts on resident evil village demo um again um fortunately i miss it i've missed both of them so far haven't really watched them uh i'll eventually i'll most likely eventually play it um as with most uh, things yeah I just, it's just not really a priority for me right now um, but, um, I'm, 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 I'm quite positive. It's going to be a very good game and I'm very happy to see people love it. I think that's going to be fun to watch people, people react to it. Nice. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and move on. Let's see. I will give some quick, I, okay, I'll do this and then we can, then we can talk about near. Uh, I, so I have bought, where did I put it? Okay, so I bought a three three movie pack Blu-ray of the CG <laughs> Resident Evil movies in, in anticipation of uh the new one coming out, uh Infinite Darkness. Um I gotta say, um not very impressed with the first yeah, movie in this pack. Great, but they're fun. <laughs> okay, what well, what got me like interested in them is that um I, I saw that stupid fucking cutscene. Uh, I, I guess I guess it's from Vendetta where they're doing one dude. With yeah, my God, they're like they just <laughs> they're just running around in circles and shooting each other. It's, it's so best. dumb, but it it it's amazing. Yeah, like like this movie. Um, I mean, I I have all the live action movies. Some of them are guilty pleasures. Others are just like kind of boring and drab. Um, but man, I I know this movie came out like I think two thousand. The first one came out two thousand eight, I believe. And but just like the voice acting is like so mm-hmm. god awful. Like like Claire is, is 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 she's okay, but like 
Leon is he's like a husk like he has nothing of his personality from two or four he, he has like no smart ass attitude to him he's just like exists and I'm just like this is my favorite Resident Evil character why why are you not being your character um Listen, the movies are fun for what they are. You don't go in expecting a masterpiece. I'm There's not expecting a master. I, I, my, I like, I like garbage. I literally showed this on screen. <laughs> Saw is a horrible franchise that I love, but just like even in comparison to the live action movies, it, it's probably my least favorite Resident Evil movie to date. Like, yeah. like, like, I swear like, they get better as they go on. That's what I'm hoping. I like. I, at least I'm hoping for that gunfight action scene to just be as perfect as I've seen before. The last film before Infinite Darkness, the one that you're talking about, I was very lucky and I saw that one in theaters. And it was like a super fun experience because you had people who were only there because they knew the live action films and they just saw Resident Evil and they were so confused. Then you have the people who played the games and were like, fuck yeah, give me this canon shit. And just like it's so fucking nuts, and the the movies are off the rails, and they're canon too, which is the crazy part. So like, you want to know what happens in between the games? You gotta watch the animated CGI films because this is literally what happens, <laughs> and it's just they're fun. So it's cool that you're that you're finally taking a look at them because I find them. Yeah, I, I definitely want to give them a fair shake. Like I, I'm definitely not expecting a masterpiece whatsoever. But even with Degeneration, I was just like. I don't, it's something to watch. I wasn't like actively having a great time with it. So definitely have higher hopes for the following two at the very least. But if, if I had to rank all of the Resident Evil movies, it would be Some in an airport are fun. It's different. <laughs> that, that's true. Um, I, I think if I were to do like best to worst, I would do Apocalypse, which is the oh. second one. Um, Retribution, because it brings back Barry and there's some good, dumb, stupid what? ass shit in there. <laughs> it's it's so good it's it so is so bad. good it's not good um after that is the first resident evil then extinction because it's super bland and boring afterlife is just dumb and final chapter because it kills wesker with a door my boy wesker goes out and five by a rocket launcher in a volcano and then in the movie they kill him a door hits his foot he's like oh no i got an ouchie i'm dead good uh after that, that, that degeneration yeah, but, I mean, so would I. Like, ouch, what the fuck? Because, because at least with these live action ones, like, they're bad in a way that I can laugh at them. Whereas with Degeneration, I'm just like, eh. Like, I, I'd rather have something be, like, laughably god awful. Because at least I can get a laugh out of it, out of just, like, just existing. Um, yeah. Watch, watch Apocalypse and Retribution. Apocalypse is Two really best good. ones. Apocalypse is too good. And everyone that has a wrong opinion. And just get your own opinion somewhere else. <laughs> um, I yeah, I think I think you're the only one that here that's played near. So I'm go ahead. Speaking for both me and Blaine, because Blaine could not be here. But uh, near replicant version 1.3. I'm not saying the whole thing. Oh, no, I, 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 I just want to say because I don't know if I shared it with you. The name what? literally, it's literally the square mm. root of 1.5. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, so, um, for those who don't know, uh, which is kind of crazy, if you don't know, I'm just going to say it anyway, Nier Automata is a pseudo sequel to a game called Nier. That was an early two, a 2010 JRPG that came out for the Xbox 360 and, Play and PlayStation 3. There were two versions of the game. There was Nier Replicant and Nier Gis 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 Gestalt. Uh, America got Gestalt, which had a father looking for the cure for his daughter, while Japan got near Replicant, which was a brother looking for the cure for his daughter. And recently, they actually sort of remastered slash remade near Replicant and released it in, released it everywhere, basically. Um, so when the game first came out, it was immediately a cult hit because it just was very weird. The combat was incredibly stiff. It was a very early 2010s JRPG. If you can, it was very early. It was, there was some super not fun stuff in it. And the game was kind of weird because it required you to beat it like four or five times to get the full story. And then uh -huh. Automata did it. And while people still complained, people considered it like one of the smartest games of last generation, which is totally true. Um, so Replicant 
is a remaster slash remake. The combat's completely over overhauled. It plays more like Automata than it is the than it did the original. So it's a lot more faster paced. Combos are a lot more easier. Hits just feel more connected when you hit things. Um, but it's a 2010 JRPG. There's a lot I... of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth mm-hmm. and back and forth and back and forth. I believe and the words that um Yoko Taro used to describe. He said it's not a remaster, it's not a it's not a remake. I he used the words uh upgraded version. Yes. Um and it has a brand new ending to it. It's called Ending E. Uh, that's like some, one of the major changes to it was they added a brand new ending. Um, and it's the first time we're getting re- Replicant. So it's the first time we're getting Brother Near searching for the cure for his sister. And oh my god, it's good. It's fucking great. I am in love with Near <laughs> Replicant. I it it's the first time in a long time when it when a game has went. Hello, I need you to get me five mutton and five goat skins. And then I'm like, all right, lady, I'll go get you your mutton and goat skins. And I come back and she's like, I need you to get five more mutton and five more goat skins. And I'm like, okay, lady, I'll go and get you more mutton and goat skins. Like, it's the first game in a really long time when the game has wanted. And I'm trying to be grindy because one of the ways to get one of the endings is to get every weapon in the game and to buy stuff. You need gold and you get gold by doing quests. It's the first game in a long time when I've had to grind, and I haven't been mad I had to grind. Like, it's annoying! <laughs> and there's some design choices that are still from the early 2010s that I'm like... <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of grinding, so I think I'll have to push through it. Um, I yeah, do like grinding um, and Tony Hawk, though. It's pretty cool there. Yes. Um, but this game is very good. If you pass by this game, you are doing yourself a disservice... Because Nier is a fucking golden time, and games will never be like Nier was. Automata, obviously, because it was the pseudo-sequel to it, but we aren't going to get games like Nier was back in the 2010s anymore. Mm. And Mm -hmm. the fact that Square even put the money in to re-release it and make it better and make it more playable is fucking insane because people prayed for this to happen for like a decade and all because Automata made them piles and piles of money which rightfully so they finally said fine we will fix Nier (laughs) we will fix it and port it to next gen consoles and it plays like a fucking dream it is very good it is incredibly emotional the music will make you cry your eyes out as it has with me already and it's just like it's great and it's hard to talk about it because i think near and near automata are two games that you need to go into blind like, you need to play these games and know nothing going in. Like, for me, I played Nier when it first came out, but I was really young, so I didn't understand everything, and I got stuck at this part that pissed me off, so I never played it again. And I reached that part last night, and I was like, ah, yes, this is where I quit. And I basically said, you know what? I'm going to push through this so I can continue playing this. Because while I know what happens, I want to physically experience what what happens. So being able to push through that and finish that one dungeon that I couldn't finish super felt great because now i'm on my way to literally beating the game for the first time and getting all these like endings after that and it's like people complain like oh why do you have to beat the game five five times it's different every time like that's what automata was the first half of automata wasn't super different but then you hit that point when it just goes off the rails and you're like fuck yeah let me beat this game five more times because I want to know what happens. And Yoko Taro's a bad man. Please experience his mad brain. Because the, if you... Oh, okay, I won't spoil anything. But if you like... If, if you remember watching Evan, Evangelion for the first time. And you got to the twist in that show. And you, and you went, oh my god. I want more dark fantasy shit. Like dark fantasy slash mecha stuff like this. You're gonna like near. You're gonna like the twist that happens in near because that's what most people remember is going from normal JR, J, jrpg to what the fuck is this that's what you're gonna get and it's like please play near it's one of those games that not many people experienced the first time because a lot of critics hated it and it's like the fact that square put the money into redoing it and made this game which gets, this game is so important near and near automata are incredibly important titles so are dragon guard even the third one because even though it sucks 
but like the Dragon Guard games, the Near games are very important JRPGs to the industry in general. And the fact that Replicate is even real and that it happened and that Square listened to people who said we want to experience Near and that they took the time to make it better. Please play Near. <laughs> like it's hard I, for me to describe it and not spoil anything. I, I think the strongest appeal to Near for me is that it's so non-traditional and it's and it's really postmodern in a lot of ways, but most particularly in the uh in the narrative department where uh, it, it, like it, yeah it, it's hard to talk about it without getting too spoilery like, like like not not even some minor stuff but like you'll do quests for people and you're not necessarily making the world a better place people will call you out, like you actively made my life worse by doing this thing you went about it the wrong way it's not like you necessarily have a choice when you're doing the quest or whatnot but it the reason why it's so special is because there's nothing else like it on the market that that is doing what it does and I, I don't I don't really my cat's being very loud right now. Uh it's very distracting. Um, but basically, yeah, there's nothing else out there on the market that's doing what it does. God, Miz, she is going off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um damn, I lost my train of thought. Just, just give me like five seconds. <laughs> It's, um, it's, I would I, I, I maybe argue against Dragon like Dragon Guard had a lot of like weirdness to it, but it wasn't until near where it really solidified where it became like a master of its craft. Um, well, I, Dragon, but yeah, I would say people Dragon go back Guard and play it. Came out at a time when JR, J, JRPGs were striving on having a happy ending, and Yoko Taro made Dragon Guard because he was tired of seeing these games have happy endings. And that's what made Dragon Guard so memorable. And this I, this isn't spoiler. The game's like 20 fucking years old. Dragon Guard had no happy endings. There was no happy endings in Dragon Guard. You, you, you lost people either to got turned into a giant harpy monster or giant flying demon babies. The, Dragon Guard had no happy endings. And you can argue that automata was kind of the same thing there was no happy ending to automata now that's up to interpretation what you think of as a happy ending and near 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 starts off like a normal jrpg then something happens and you're like oh fuck and that's that's what makes near so great is the subversion of expectations and the subversion of jr of jr jrpg tropes it subverts these things so well that when it happens, you're going in blind, like with what Automata did, I believe it was after ending B. Automata takes that turn, and you're like, oh, fuck, what the hell is going on? Nier, Nier doesn't even wait till ending B. Nier's like halfway through the game, like, bam! Like, yeah, with, with Automata crazy. and Route B, it was it's basically like going through Route A, but with a different perspective, and you're getting, you're getting, and you're getting more... Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. the entirety of Route B, you're playing as a separate character and you're getting yeah. uh, different contexts about everything that you basically went through with A that you didn't know what was really going mm -hmm. on. And then C kind of, it's, I, I would say that's where the, like the second part of that game really gets going. Yeah, out of but, too. But, but yeah, where yeah. like, or like even the original release of Nier succeeded, I, I would definitely say like there, there's a lot of interesting stuff in Dragon Guard that's like worth reading into or watching videos by, uh, your watch boy Clemps. Clemps videos, please. Yeah. For the love of God, it's like but, if you uh, want to watch a great, like if you want to watch Dragon Guard and want to play Dragon Guard, there's a guy named YouTube. His name is Mr. Clemps. I do not know this man personally, though I wish I did. Clemps made an amazing Dragon Guard retrospective and story analysis that explains everything, and he even explains the stuff that connects to Near. Because for those who don't know, Nier is a sequel to Dra to, to the first Dragon Dragon Guard. It is 100 percent a sequel to it. The game mentions stuff that happens in Dragon Guard. It's been on record saying saying that it's a sequel. It's important to the franchise, and I think the way that Nier and Nier Automata handles this is is such a, a lesson in story in like storytelling, where if you know the 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 dragon guard connection it makes playing near so much better if mm -hmm. you don't need it and and like the, this is the one spot when that's true you don't need it but when you know it it connects so many little dots for you and connects so many mm -hmm. little like aspects of it but yeah just, just to um it's just insane to, 
Yeah, just to go back to my point, though, it would be like, yeah, the, the story of Dragon Guard is definitely worth reading into, definitely worth worth watching, and Mr. Clemps' videos specifically on it. Um, Dragon Guard, and, and like even to Mr. Clemps <laughs> uh, for what he said, it is, if you did not play that game originally, even if you did, it is fucking rough to go back to. Like, it is not fundamentally necessarily a great game. Uh, and like on the gameplay oh. front, like it is an active well, chore to go play, through. It plays bad on purpose. Yeah, that's honestly <laughs> the point. And plus, the first near played bad too, and it's fucking. Well, that one wasn't on. Not, not as bad. Yeah, that one was really bad, which is a total detriment to it. So, like the fact that they even took the time to upgrade the combat in Replicant version one point three is nuts. Like the fact that they took the time out to make it more mm. responsive, make it more like an automata, because that's what people liked, is crazy and it's mind blowing to me. Because as soon as I started combat, I paused and went, "This is just automata." Like as soon as I st- went into con- combat, I was like, "Oh my god, I don't remember it being this good." Like they took the time and they went through and they made it good. And it's just like, I really hope that people actually pick this up and play it because it is phenomenal in every aspect. This is what a remake slash remaster should be, which is, yes, keep, yes, I'm kind of annoyed that it kept all the like 2010, please find me 20 pieces of mutton and 20 pieces of sheepskin that I'm going to send you to go find rat tails at the same exact spot. And I'm going to strangle this person if they ask for another boar's tooth. But it's like, You're playing a game of a time, yes, but at the same time, you're playing a game that is so well regarded that barely anybody played that people are now getting the chance to experience. And a lot of these people are are experiencing this blind. They just played Automata and knew that it was a sequel to this random game called Nier, and they can play Nier now. So you're you're jumping into something that's so fucking phenomenal that's such an easier entry point now and i think it's amazing that this even exists like it's crazy that you're looking at me and you're like hey resident evil 8 comes out in two weeks but here's the remake slash remaster slash upgrade of the original near it's like i would have never thought that i would be and i'm looking at the giant collector's edition box because it's a very big fucking box so it just like stands out it's like you I would have never thought that I would be playing the original Nier again after I did when I was like 13 or 14 and didn't understand any of the like deeper meanings and themes of it and just playing it now and bawling my eyes out because a song starts and it's beautiful. Like, Kyle, I want to talk to you really mm-hmm. quick because you played all Automata, correct? Yes. You and you're a music person. The way that the Nier series uses music in a way that the music just seemingly erupts from it. Like when you enter the overgrown city in near Automata and that track erupts from it and you hear the the lyrics and the original near does the same thing when you're in a certain cutscene, when it's about a certain character and that character's theme just, just starts playing and it's loud and it's, rupturous and it's boisterous and it's just in your face the emotions the music that that these that automata and the original near causes is some of the best implemented music i've seen in gaming Mm -hmm. ever ever the way that near and and exceptual automata uses its music and it uses its other language vocals and just you don't know what they're saying but the way that emily evans is singing it and you can just feel it like something in whenever i hear kainé's theme something in my chest like literally just rips in half because i can feel the sadness i can feel the pain i feel the anger but it's done in such a way that's beautiful that is how kainé is and i've never played a game that has implemented its music like that i think yeah. Nier and Nier automata is the only games <laughs> i guess uh kyle if you want to jump on that just so we can move on to the next thing well so th- that's the big thing that, that drew me into it Tom. And I, I mean i love the game i, I thought this the story stuff was great i love things that are kind of more out there and 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 I guess weird um so i really appreciate it but the music is what really struck me because it took a more more of a, a cinematic approach to the soundtrack it wasn't 
most video games, the music that we remember from it, we remember songs that were like, oh, that just sounds really catchy, or this is really cool, or this was from my favorite level. But it, this, for Automata, the entire soundtrack in every environment, it was able to build on an extra layer of emotion to what was going on and to what was happening. And so that that's what really drew me in and really made me feel connected to the stuff that was going on. When you first get to the um the uh, the, the theme park area and they're they're playing the music through there and I'm listening to that and I'm just like wow I'm like become is, as gods this become is become as gods this is so good and so it's like that's what I'm really like I haven't started replicate yet and I'm ho- I'm hoping to do that whenever things are you know the PC port is more playable but like that music can take a game to the next level in the same way that it can take a movie to the next level. I watched Endgame this weekend with my dad because he had only seen all those movies once. So we were watching through all the Marvel movies over the last couple weeks. I've been going over and seeing them with him. And we were watching that. And the first thing that kept sticking out to us, both as musicians, was how well the music adds to the impact of a lot of those scenes. And that's what Nier does so well. And so many other games tend to fall short, even the ones that do try to put an emphasis on music. There was just... The, the the way they did it with every single track was just next level and so that's like i've already listened to to a good chunk of the soundtrack for a replicant and i'm so i'm very it's very so excited good. to now to now see the story that goes along with it and not just listening to the music as a as a quick side note since you're playing the pc version um out of curiosity what uh graphics card do you have nvidia or amd nvidia I would imagine a quick fix for for at least the frame rate issues. If you go to the NVIDIA control panel, uh, you should be able to to force uh, V-Sync or even better, uh, Fast Sync at a system level or even just specifically for um, for near. So that might fix it if you if you feel like jumping into it before like an official yeah, uh, uh, patch or whatnot. Well, I, I would assume within the next couple of weeks, it'll be either figuring out a way like that to work around it or there will be a fan patch yeah to, i can see the fan things. patch coming you, you, yeah. you have far more patience than i Ka. <laughs> yeah i don't I, I don't envision it taking long enough and it just happens to be that over the next like two weeks things are really busy for me just work wise so it's just like cool so i can i can wait like a week or two i can't wait much more than that <laughs> but so once it gets once it gets to that point i'm just gonna dive in and play do what i did with automata and play every single ending in the span of three days because i just literally <laughs> cannot stop I, playing i feel Mesa, like for myself um or yeah go ahead Mesa. Mesa, talk about near oh well um uh near is near <sighs> near is <sighs> it's so ahead of its time so ahead of its time that i its review scores were inevitable honestly for when it came out um that's probably one of the worst games to review i could ever imagine like like imagine like you're you're thinking about your deadline and then you hit you then you hit the storybook <laughs> tree sequence oh no oh my no. god i could i would be livid so yeah um even the concept of like multiple endings and everything that, that's just, that, that person reviewing it must be just like wait what the fuck is this so, yeah really quick funny story on that it got so bad that when automata released when you beat automata for the first time mm-hmm. there's a little fucking box that pops up just... saying like you ain't done yet yeah. <laughs> and like, there's a new game bitch like i feel like some of that people that are be... like i beat that game once and i'm done I'm like, it's like no you're not you? I, f- I feel like so much of that could honestly be fixed if they didn't this could be a semantical argument but i, I guess it'd, it'd be important to people as if they don't label those playthroughs as like playthroughs or endings. Mm-hmm. They just said like, yeah, no, you're, you're still in here. Well, that's but. the whole point is, and the, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but the whole idea that near and near automata are in different time uh, timelines. Everything that happens is in a different timeline. So mm-hmm. a story may end in one way in one time timeline, but it's always going to end a different way in another. And Dragon Guard three pretty much revealed this was that canon canon ever- timeline for automata is where you pull out your own processor and then you just explode yes. um oh. but like it was, uh, it was not eating the fish 
Not even finish. <laughs> it was um, it was revealed in Dragon Guard Three that that every ending is its own time uh, mm-hmm. timeline. So um, when you start he- up a new game, you're starting up a new timeline. Yep. Yeah, Mesa, go, go back to what you're saying. Um. Yeah. It's it. It really is like an extremely special game. Um, and I'm happy that it's able to get um, um, the the glow up that it deserved. Um, and hopefully, you know, um, you know, with that extra dialogue that helps, you know, people avoid the McElroy, uh, <laughs> the McElroy issue. Um, uh, like, yeah, that, that game just that game just needed just a, just a couple extra tweaks, a couple extra arrows pointing you where to go, and then and and. Uh, it, it, it I, it's a masterpiece, and I'm, I'm happy that more people finally have a chance to play it again. How how soon is it going to be on your um, on your table in terms of playing it? Because I know at least for me, I've definitely taken a bit more of a financial stance in my life, where I'm just like, don't buy stuff. I'm not going to play right now. So like, I'm playing through Yakuza. That's going to take me a while. Um, I'm going to make the exception for Resident Evil Eight because I'm like insanely excited and passionate for that series. Mm-hmm. Um. But like, I might try to catch Nier on sale, but I realistically, I probably will not be playing it for a hot minute. Same, honestly. Like, I, I'm, I don't really like. I know that name, the game, pretty well. You know, I can, I can, I can look at what's new, and then I can be like, "Oh, that's awesome! That's that adds a lot to the story." But there's yeah, yeah, but I can, I can, I can, I can acquire NDE. It's if, it's if I can't wait. I just it it's so hard because it because it came out it because that's the right point. I put down Ghost of Sushi because I've been waiting specifically for near, but I gotta mm-hmm. beat it before Resident Evil 8 comes out, and that means I'm literally pushing aside the Mass Effect collection, which pains me like physically and mentally to play Resident Evil 8 and to beat near because I never beat the original near i didn't mm. beat it at all so i'm so i want to do that now okay yeah that now because even though i yeah. watch Punks's videos i've never personally held the controller and beat it so i'm putting that in the forefront because mm-hmm. i want to experience all all that and i want to get that ending that requires you to get every weapon like i want to do yeah everything that i possibly can and if that means i have to prioritize certain side quests to get weapons i will do that too like, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what? I want to beat this. I want to play this. When Resident Evil 8 comes out, I might put this down if I'm still playing it. Because Resident Evil 8 is just a straight experience. It's not like it's a giant open open world mm-hmm. game. So I might do that. But I will beat Nier before I touch anything else. Because I've been mm-hmm. so long for this. And Square already had my money back in September when I got that collector's mm-hmm. edition. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, for me, I already like... I'm still, I'm still, I'm still basically avoiding Last of Us 2. Uh, I you know I what I, eye, I just don't make eye contact. Uh, I just want to say, Mesa, I I admire your financial responsibility. <laughs> oh, it's not responsibility. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> um, wait, no, but, did, um, wait, no. Actually, no. You made a purchase. I forget what it was. You made a little purchase a while ago that we were all like, Mesa, no. I don't remember what, what was it was it? though. Well, what could it have been? I don't remember, but we we're all like, no. Why'd you do that? No, admittedly, I I used to be very bad about rebuying games on separate mm. platforms. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll make an exception for Resident Evil Four. That's like fucking ten bucks each time I bought it. But mm. I I used to be real. Yeah, that's bad. on you, from. I can't I, say anything about really dumb purchases because I did make one. <laughs> I mean, you are you are constantly buying collectors editions and no, this is, this is pure. And listen, been, Chris's Chris's ass is of deep importance to me. Hush. I am one platform away from having every single version of Dragon Ball Fighters, no, I um, and I and I and I think about that, and I don't. What? No, no, <laughs> no. But you know, like it's gonna be on Xbox. Like who plays that on Xbox? But I feel like I could save know. so much more money if if I just played Destiny two. <laughs> just buy the expansions, and that's it. True. Or you know, I if dump you all my money in uh, I just dump all my money in Street Fighter. <laughs> um, let's see. We got time for like one more news story, then we'll go ahead and call it a wrap. This is a pretty quick one, anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. uh following 
Why well, did not write the sentence correctly? Jesus Christ. Read uh, it the way you wrote it. <laughs> Please read it uh, the way you wrote it. The way you wrote it. I already mm-hmm. fixed it. No. Following the previous week's long backlash to their decision to take down digital storefronts for the PS3, PSP, and Vita, PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan took to the PlayStation blog last week to announce... I, I did not write any of this right. Jesus Christ. He Re-read said, it. quote, uh, it's clear that we made the wrong decision here. So today I'm happy to announce that we are keeping the PlayStation Store operational for PS3 and PS Vita devices. PSP commerce functionality will retire on July 2nd of 2021. Um, just just quick note for that. I didn't write. Uh, the Vita is the successor of the PSP anyway. Everything you can do on there, you can do on the Vita. It's fine. Um, Mm -hmm. Ryan goes on to cite the reasons behind the initial decision to close the stores being commerce support challenges and focusing resources on newer devices. And, uh, oh yeah. In a bit of irony, Ryan states that he's glad that PlayStation can keep this piece of history alive for gamers to enjoy. Uh, You can, you you can't say that. I can't say that. (laughs) No, no, he can't say that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, No one's allowed to say it. He's he's literally also, a dude on record, just like these games look ancient. Why would you want to play them? And it's very clear that um they did not at least he did not think that people cared that much. I I am I mean I, on one hand I feel like oh no we don't you don't want to give power to gamers because gamers are shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just like this is just such a obtusely stupid position. I think like pretty much everyone here was pretty uniform that this was in no way, shape, or form a net benefit for, for mm-hmm. players. Um, it was erasing history. It was erasing ease of access to games that would otherwise be obtusely um, expensive to purchase physically. Um, yeah, and, and like I, I, it stood out in particular to me that the entire appeal of um, the, the game that's installed on every single copy of uh, people's PlayStation 5's Astro... Um, Astro's Playroom, like the entire premise of that game is like, look at our PlayStation history. Your here's just filled with nostalgia. We are proud of this. And then they turn around and be like, nah, fuck them old games. Um, yeah, very, very happy that they stepped back on this. Um, I don't think you were any were you there for any of those episodes, Mesa? Yeah, I was there for the first. Oh, there you go. You you had the you had the most doom and gloom. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was there agreeing with Blaine. I, Sarah, were you there? Yeah, no. I totally was. I think this is a great step forward for preservation, but it's also, yeah, g- gamers are terrible and we shouldn't become the Snyder Cut people. <laughs> we shouldn't, we shouldn't please, become please, the Snyder Cut people. We please, have please, too much power. Please don't guest on, get on uh, Geeks and Gamers, Sarah. Don't do it. I would burn that show to the ground. Oh, yo! I don't think they. I don't think they like any of us. <laughs> <laughs> I would burn that show to the ground. I would light that match live on air. Just be like, I'm gonna wreck you guys. This is being burnt to the ground. I'm sorry. I'm. I just go down with with the flames, yelling. Jason Momoa was a good fucking uncle, man. Everyone can shut the fuck up. I mean, I, I can think. I can only think of like one person that I had talked to that was just like. Maybe not even necessarily okay with it, but just like, yeah, they should go ahead and do it. Like they were in agreement with it. And uh, I obviously I'm in disagreement with that. But um, like, I, I don't have any. It's like, it's not like Sony struggling, just like, oh shit, dude, we got to save pennies. We got to cut down because um, these servers are running. Maybe not necessarily the optimal amount of people are still actively using them to, to like outweigh it. Um, Sony has, or I should say PlayStation and their circa Sony has had like the most financial success they've ever had in the last couple of years. So they're not struggling to keep up um, mm-hmm. uh, some already shitty existing PS3 services. I don't know if if anyone here has gone back to the PS3 to re-download anything. That, oh, the, the PS3, PS3 store is agents. fucking garbage. It runs so goddamn slow. It is such a Absolutely. pain in the ass to do anything on there. It is it bad. Um, I, I, you know, it was funny. Um, I kind of wish Blaine was here because literally the night before they announced this news, she was making a gigantic list of, of stuff that she wanted to grab. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, okay, here's the exact amount of money I need to spend. I'm here's going to my credit card. And, <laughs> um, 
And Sony went, no, Blaine, save your, save your pennies. It is okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are here with gift. We shall keep store. I, I, and I'm, I'm curious how much things. of this decision, I'm curious how much of this decision was like swayed by them seeing like a bunch of people panic. I would, I, I don't panic mean that. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't even mean that with like a negative connotation, but like panic buying. They're like, oh, people actually do care. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. With how fast this turnaround was. 100% they were like, ah, oh, fuck, people really want this. And if mm -hmm. we get, get get rid of this, we're going to lose people. And now I say, long live the Vita TV. <laughs> well, the, the crappiest part, one, I guess one of the crappiest parts of it to me was that this wasn't like, hey, uh, let, let's uh, talk about this. Like in five, let's say like in five years, we got to take this stuff down, but you're going to have five years to do anything and everything you need. Like this was literally, uh, you mm -hmm. got like two months. I was, it's it's like such fucking short notice. I'm like, that's that's yeah. not great optics. That that's not cool. So, but so uh, I have, oh, yeah, good cop. I have a second conspiracy theory of the night. Oh, All right. Does it involve Jim Ryan on certain websites? No, oh, no. no. Well, that's a different. I mean, probably does happen, but unrelated. <laughs> and 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 this one is realistically just probably corporate incompetence. This whole story. But there's a part of me that goes, man, what if they never had any intention of bringing this down, but they knew that the second they said we're bringing it down, so many people were going to rush to buy everything they hadn't bought yet. And then they could go, oh, we realized we messed up. We're taking this back. Look at us doing a good thing and still keeping all the money you spent on us. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, just... I would like to see, like, Sales numbers for I'm just, stuff in between them announcing, I, hey, it's going down. Yeah, I, I'm always super cynical about things like that, and it, which is not always a good thing. But I don't know. I with something like that, I go. It, it is more likely that they were just incompetent, and it's. I mean, it's pretty clear that Jim Ryan just doesn't care about and doesn't understand why people care about old games. Mm -hmm. So his philosophy was just kind of like. Yeah, well, well, nobody's going to miss them, so let's just get rid of them because I don't want to have to ever care about them. Not because it costs too much money to deal with, but just because I don't even want to have to see it existing in our corporate structure. But I, I and then, you know, realizing, hey, so we shouldn't. But I know a lot of people who were going and buying things and they were buying Vita games, they were buying PS3 games, and they were doing stuff. And then when it happened, they were pretty mad because mm -hmm. they're like, well, why did I just spend all that money when? <laughs> that was kind of that was kind of pointless. Like it's all it's yeah. all back. Even, like that. Even uh, Arcade Main slash uh, Darkwing Dad in here says uh, he loaded up on PSN cards and bought about fifty dollars worth of stuff, like specifically because of this. And yeah, it, and that, it, it it just screams to me just like how out of like it, it it obviously extends to just to more than just Jim Ryan, like whoever's on whatever board making these decisions. It's just like. How out of touch do you have to be with your fan base to think that this is just going to slide? It's, I mean, well, I mean, pe people bring up like the PS3 era arrogance of Sony, just like you're going to work two jobs in order to buy our console. Um, and then obviously the PS4, they catered more like strictly to games. Um, it, it, they kind of flip flopped with Microsoft. There's the whole freaking Xbox One um, always online debacle with Don Matrick back in 2013. You but, always have to have it on the internet. Ah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but we're deaf. I think uh, if there's any indicator that this is definitely an era of arrogant Sony again, I think this is probably maybe the tip of the iceberg for it. Mm. And, and I think it's 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 not even unique to Sony. I think like the big three, right? Sony, Microsoft, and and Nintendo. I mean, maybe not Microsoft recently, but as recently as within the last decade. All, all three of these these companies have made some really boneheaded decisions that make no sense. Nintendo still hasn't figured out a way to allow people to play online with each other in a way that makes sense, even they, though it's they killed Mario too. Well, that's you know I I might agree with that one. <laughs> all right. Um, Can we um, very quickly bring up I mean, like, that people say that PlayStation Three was a bad console, but the PlayStation Three gave us PlayStation Home, and Sony just re-upped the trademark rights for PlayStation Home, and I'm very, very excited by this news. 
You know, that reminds me of... I'm sorry, go ahead, Mesa. I was going to say, my guess is that they're probably going to reuse PlayStation Home for PSVR. I would lose my collective shit. I want PlayStation Home back so bad. (laughs) And for anyone who tells me it was stupid, you can shut the fuck up, because PlayStation Home was cool. And I spent too much money on my avatar (laughs) clothes. I had 13 apartments, Mm -hmm. and I had so much furniture in that damn game. I never even touched it. (laughs) PlayStation Home was the coolest. It was like Second Life, but you had a PlayStation avatar and you could dress them up as characters. You could show off your trophies and you could like have apartments that were based off of video games. And so I had like a, I had Assassin's Creed 2 apartment that was just like an Italy based apartment. And it was like the dumbest fucking thing ever, but it was so cool. And they referenced PlayStation Home in Astro's play Playroom. And just two days ago, Sony re-upped the trademark for PlayStation Home, and I am losing my mind. Yeah. I, I will oh, say, as, as, as cool as the PlayStation 5 is, like, I, I don't own a Series X, but uh, I think it's safe to say the PlayStation 5 is a bad console because you can't play Dead Space on it. This is, this is wrong. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's making good points. I need, I, mean, I need, I need a refute. I need a refute. The series, um, X, yeah, like, the series X is a bad console because you cannot play Miles Morales on it, or Astros, mm. or Ratchet and Clank when it comes out. Yeah, it's like, no offense to my Xbox, but I bought it as another Gears machine, and but, I, I'm halfway through uh, Tactics, and it's okay. Gabe is Gabe is cool, but I'm sitting here in my corner, like, so when am I getting Gears Six? That's the only reason I bought this fucking console. Was it for the inevitable? Please. Yeah, I just think like, is it is it too way... effective if people wait? Is it good or no? I'm I'm sorry. Let me reword that. Is it are you too effective or not effective enough if people can't read your shit post correctly? Uh, too. Too effective. Yeah, too effective. Yeah. Oh damn. Okay. My, my, the first Dead Space sucks. Dead Space 2 is better. Powerful. That's, um, that is a bad opinion, but I will not um, let it slide um, in the slightest. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, right, but like, the, you can, like, uh, the way, like, even Sony's, like, starting to neglect a lot of its Japanese, like, uh, like th- leanings and like the fact that that they had this own they had their a team literally called J- Japan Studio <laughs> but the heads left because they weren't doing anything. Uh, I think I think um they, they like they reconsolidated everything yeah. uh, into like into other parts of the company. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we, I've had a news story about this in the notes for forever. Yeah. We just haven't gotten it's just, into it. It's but, like just everything's like being funneled into um team asobi the the team behind uh astro Mm -hmm. astro yeah it just seems like i don't know i I, I think playstation is like very blatantly an american facing company at this point like their big their biggest studios are american studios Mm -hmm. and that's that's where they're putting their marketing that's where they're putting the money well which I, i mean and I, I enjoy JRPGs, so there's a part of me that's like, man, well, that sucks because I wish they'd be putting more into that. But there's the other part of me where like, okay, I get it because God of War 2 is going to sell a hell of a lot more than Near Replicant is going to mm-hmm. sell, right? N- not Doesn't mean Replicant's a bad game. Doesn't mean it's not worth doing it. But like one is, is going to sell a lot more. And so they're just going like, okay, here's what's going to sell more. Here's what we're going to do. I, I don't always think that, I don't think that's the right call. But again, that's why I'm not running a place like that because their job is purely just to find a way to make the most money and not provide the best things for everybody which is which is why like i we mentioned we, we talked about microsoft like being really shitty for a while lately they've been the exact opposite which has been weird mm-hmm. and i'm waiting for the monkey's paw that we're inevitably gonna get <laughs> like something's gonna happen like they're game gonna pass. find out like game pass like, fifty dollars a month well no it's gonna be like if you subscribe to game pass they also legally own your left kidney like there's going to be there's there's going to be because there's 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 just it, it's it's very hard to believe that a company could just be like, yeah, no, we just want to make it easier for people to play more games. I guess it's it when it's a company like Microsoft that has a bunch of money and does things other than just uh, Xbox and they're the most the bulk of their money comes from other things as well. 
So maybe maybe that's part of why it's a little easier for them. But the the sudden pro consumer pro people who enjoy playing video games moves from Microsoft seemed really out of place. And you see the things kind of more from Nintendo and Sony where it's like, hey, you have really good games. Your games are great. All of your other stuff is really frustrating because it shouldn't be this complicated. Why? Why on a switch can I not just hop on and connect with uh, and play with other people? Why on PlayStation are you going to take down the stores from older consoles and then decide that you want to bring them back up later? And, and all and you know, it's for a lot of them, it's like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. So Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, this is, I did not read, I don't read user agreements. Most because right? I, I, I never agree with them. This is a user that never agrees. Oh, I just I blindly agree with anything. I just I, I can't read, so I just anything in front of me, I'm just like, sure, yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, it's okay. I think, um, even generally go- to go back to the um, the contrast of I guess uh, Sony's arrogance versus Microsoft, even the position they were in before, uh, back in 2013 with the launch of the Xbox One under um, Don Matrick. Uh, it, we kind of need these pendulums to constantly swing back because ultimately it's a it it competition is always good. You don't want like one clear uh, winner because then they're not incentivized to ultimately to ultimately um, make better products for their consumers. Um, so I don't think anyone should like be celebrating Sony doing these things. But at the same time, like like praise Microsoft for what they're doing. But if they try to if they try to get a one up on you, you 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 shouldn't just cave into it either. Like when they try doing the whole let's jack up the price on Xbox Live Gold because they they're very obviously trying to herd people into Game Pass as mm-hmm. the new model and they and they just entirely get rid of Gold, but not everyone's willing to um to migrate to that quite yet. So hold each company accountable as they do stuff. I guess. I mean, I- hell, look at. Oh, I was gonna say that. Like, how look at the um, look look at the um, the the um, the uh, uh what the, the the financing versions of the the new Xboxes. Or well, like, um, if you finance it, um, if you look at how much bo- what you get from that, it uh, it comes out being cheaper because they want you on the platform. They want you with a Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think at the end of the day, honestly, and this is one of the rare moments where I'm not super cynical. I think at the end of the day, Microsoft's moves win out and kind of become the norm. And I think the other I think we see, especially Sony, I don't know if Nintendo will adapt or, or at least definitely will do it as quickly because they don't need to because they're they're a lot more unique. But I think Sony's and they're already talking about finding a way to kind of compete with Game Pass, right? Because PlayStation now does not compete with Game Pass. It's just I I did like a a two week trial of it recently just to try it. It's like this is this is terrible, but I love Game Pass. Clearly, they're going to have to do things to try to mimic that because they're starting to lose out. The fact that every first party Xbox game comes out on Game Pass at launch on PC and on console and everybody can play it. And like, that's if you would have, would have told me that two years ago, I would have told you that you were ridiculous. Like there's no way they would ever do that. And I think Sony's not going to be able to sit there and go, nah, we're not going to change anything. You're going to pay $60 for our game and you're going to like it, or you're just not going to play it. Cause I think people are going to go, okay, fine. Then I'll just play it in a year when it's $15, you know, uh, on sale or I can I can find it used that somebody's selling for for five bucks because they want to get rid of it. So I think I think as long as I think Microsoft is looking at it going if sure we can afford to do this and they're gonna other people are gonna have to change with us and I, I hope I hope that's what we see. I, I think even um for something that you touched upon there it's just like it's that clear contrast between Microsoft given this extremely consumer friendly way to get into games it's it's uh 10 or 15 dollars a month depending if you want to play online whatever um like yeah it's extremely consumer friendly then you look at Sony where Returnal's coming up and uh if you want to play Returnal you don't have a cheap and convenient way to play like it's not just a full price 60 dollar game that's 70 dollars PlayStation's checking up the price on all their 
um triple a exclusives so it, it's it's like freaking night and day and ultimately i think sony's just gonna have to adapt to getting playstation now up to par and like i do i do want to say like it has gotten better they do have a bit more of a selection on games like i know like the evil thin 2 a game i've been streaming it was on there and it's like oh yeah i, I could buy evil thin 2 on i guess the ps4 version for 20 bucks or you can get it as ps now i forget what the pricing model is but they so they're, they're supporting it but they don't really care about it as much they don't advertise it they're not getting big games day one they're not putting their own games necessarily even on there it's <laughs> It's it's a it's a they poor man's game pass. People are going to spend seventy sixty dollars. That's what people seem to forget about this is that people will spend that money. Sony has that background to them, has that reputation to them, where you know if it's a Sony Studios or if it's a PlayStation Studios game, let it be Santa 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 Monica, let it be San San Diego, let it be their Japanese in house studios. You know it's going to be a solid experience. You know it's going to be, hell, it's not going to be anything less than a great experience. And with a pedigree like that, and I've always said this, I don't think they need to worry that they're going to price their games at 70 bucks. People are still going to buy them. God of War Ragnarok is going to be $70 at launch, and that's going to be the best, like, until Call of Duty comes out, whatever Call of Duty comes out that that year, that's going to be the best-selling game of, of the year. I have literally placed my right kidney on it. That that literally oh, no. Sony's gonna price Ragnarok. Oh out. god. Oh god. Uh Sony's gonna price Ragnarok at $70. Everyone's gonna still buy it. And you can say that you're not going to, but then you're gonna see the gameplay preview of it. You're gonna see all the stuff that you wanted to see in the first God of God of War, and you're gonna spend $70 on it. Hell, I'm gonna shell out 70 bucks. Because I know if I don't and I wait, that shit's going to get spoiled. And Sony knows that, too. And it's yeah. like, I'm not being rude here. I'm just, like, stating the absolute obvious. Like, people are going to spend $70 on this. And people may go around on Twitter and be like, oh, I'm not going to. You will. You will shell out. Oh, pe- people absolutely are. And, like, admittedly, like, I'm, I, if a game is worth the price of me, I'm going to buy it. And mm-hmm. admittedly, um... So Sony's first party output like strongly appeals to my own personal taste, but just you, just just even too. for the end of the day for like what's consumer friendly, um, PlayStation's not winning that fight in the slightest. I, I would I mean, love to see something. Hmm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I mean I would just say I think they made that with getting the PS5 and the Xbox Series X something the hardest shit to do last year, and we were in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Didn't yeah. stop me and Mesa from going to Target. Didn't stop me no, from getting yeah. both. I would I, I would love to see them do some sort of a because I understand they're not going to they're not going to follow the Xbox. Part of the reason that Microsoft could put their first party games on Game Pass day one is because they're not as. Um, they're, they're right, they're not they're, they're not. I don't want to say they're not as good as the commodities because I because I don't mean it that way. But they mm-hmm. there's just a, a, a there's a bigger kind of hype between a lot of these behind a lot of these these Sony first party games. but. If they did some sort of like a kind of like what the Disney Plus model has been, which is like, hey, you pay for this subscription where at some point you get access to everything. But if you want to play it when it first comes out, you pay an additional, you know, 30 bucks and you get it, you know, six months early. Otherwise, you have to wait six months to play it. Something something along those lines where they're still making a, a good amount of money. And I think they're getting i'd love to see something like that because i think that would be nice but yeah people people are going to pay 70 bucks and i don't think there's anything wrong with that especially if you're making good games i don't think there's anything wrong with paying more for games i have an issue with paying more for games that that are lacking content and lacking things but that's a that's a complete that's not an issue sony first party games have have had so Mm -hmm. i don't find that to be an issue microsoft chilling out that windows 10 money but at the same time, like like Game Pass gives Microsoft such freedom to be able to greenlit kind of whatever they want because they know someone will play it because it's on Game Pass. When like Sony, you have to make something that you think people will buy, you know? Um, uh, um, one of my favorite games of all time, Outer Worlds, uh, sorry, Outer Wilds, 
uh, I got to play because it was on Game Pass. I heard someone say, hey, you should play this game. And I said, cool, I'm going to play that because I have Game Pass. And then, you know, you, you unfortunately, you just don't have that experience on PlayStation. And uh, it's, it's really lacking. Yeah. Well, and one of the other things we saw, and we saw this with Forza when it went on Steam, and people were buying it for full price, despite the fact that it's on Game Pass. I think you would see something similar with Sony. If you had these games mm-hmm. accessible through mm-hmm. through their version mm-hmm. of Game Pass, I think people would still buy a lot of those games. As, as a yeah, slight segue to, to that, um, PC users are such a weird barometer because they can't even be bothered to, to open a game from a different app. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> fucking weird. I don't understand it, honestly. It's all desktop icons. Like I already got Origin, I already got UPlay. What? What's another one? The other one's easier. That's how you can play Kingdom Hearts. It's 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 easier because because Epic Games just gets out my way. I start up the game and it goes all right, have fun, and then it just leaves. Like Origin, UPlay, they gotta stick around. They gotta talk to me. Like I'm just twenty points. I'm just trying to sit here and have fun, all right? And at least <laughs> uh, at least Epic has the decency to respect my time and not bog me down with garbage. Plus, free games every week is kind of nice. That too, yeah, yeah that's my, very nice. My yeah. Epic library is huge, and I've only paid for three of those games. Because <laughs> <I, laughs> Epic's f- like, here you go. And I'm like, thanks. I forgot how much I one. love Aggressive Mesa. Oh wait, no! No, I only bought one. Yeah, I only bought one because it's just—it's just so frustrating to see these people. Like, oh, it's on Epic. Never mind. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you you could just, just add it to Steve. <laughs> like, calm down. Look past yourself. <laughs> Look in the it's, mirror. For bigger it, problems. It's it's incredibly dumb because also people fail to realize that Epic has a better monetization value for developers. So, mm-hmm. like, if you buy it off Epic, developers are getting more of the cost. And, and then, that's and then, why, honestly, I never buy anything on Steam any any anymore. Like if it's also on Epic Games, I will buy it on Epic Games to give the developers and, more of a more of a profit. And then they'll go, nah, I'm not I'm not doing that on Epic Games, and then go buy it on PlayStation. Like, come on, guy. Let's be real. I mean, to be fair, Origin Origin sucks. I I, I have constantly having issues where just like I try to open it and it just, just does not want to work whatsoever Gross. i'm just like i i've had to call customer service like five separate fucking <laughs> times just to get origin to open i'm like come on i just want to play titanfall 2 i have a friend who has four uplay accounts oh geez. because it was easier to make a new uplay account than to find the password for the old one use a password manager <laughs> <laughs> and two factor no, authentication. It, it's it's so much easier if you just use the same password for everything. Then you'll never forget it. <laughs> Rar, if you ever listen to this, please don't kill me. I'm sorry. I'm I'm literally gonna clip that. <laughs> See the best part is if you use numbers. It doesn't matter what numbers you choose because it's impossible to figure out. <laughs> Rar is gonna be rolling in his grave. I can already feel his his anger and he hasn't even heard it yet. I'm I'm gonna DM this too. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> uh, forgive me. Um, with that, I think that's gonna go and do the show. Um, <laughs> I want to go and thank uh, Kyle for coming on. It, it's been a blast having you on, man. Absolutely, it was so much fun. Thank you for having me. So, is there any way I can like hang out with Tony Hawk too? I want to hang out with Tony Hawk again. I I was bummed that. Like I only ever got to do something like that once. That was something like I want to do something like that again, and I never will. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, thanks for everyone for coming on. Thanks mm-hmm. everyone for watching. Um, please yeah. go ahead and support everyone. Their ads are on mm-hmm. screen. Everyone kind of does their own thing and whatnot. Um, my next what day is it? Sunday, I think. Yep. I th- I forgot like my stream schedule for this week. I think I'm streaming Wednesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. PST. Uh, we're gonna be still doing the Evil Within two, and oh, I forgot. Uh, with it was it in two or three weeks? I am going to Disneyland uh, with my partner for three days. So, um, I don't know if I'm gonna do 
scheduling for my usual content, like my usual daily content. Um, the reason why I had to stop doing uh, scheduling ahead of time is because there's some clashes with pa- with Patreon where if I give early access to content, I can't have it scheduled. It has to be unlisted, which means I have to later manually trick. It's a it's a big mess. But as it gets closer, I'll decide um, whether it's going to be early for everybody or I, I, I'll fu- I figure it out. I haven't thought about it. Too Are much. you going to do an IRL stream? I oh yeah, dude, we're gonna do it right on Space Mountain. I don't think it's even called Space Mountain anymore. It's like it's totally just like no, Star Wars. It is. It's called okay. Space Mountain. Stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like that's Space Mountain's too iconic to. Yeah, <laughs> if to they kill. name Space Mountain, people would fucking riot. Yeah, I might. Um, I might. Um, we, I was supposed to go to Disneyland last um last May, and obviously that didn't happen because the world decided to end and personally ruined my plans. Oh, um, I was going to be in Europe. (laughs) (laughs) So I I had renewed my annual pass to Disney World because I'm about 15 minutes away from from that here. uh, in Florida. So so I had renewed the pass on March 8th of last year. Oh, wow. Did they at least Mm. refund you? Yeah, I was able to cancel it when they, they started doing that like towards the end of the month they started letting people do that so i was able to do that which was nice but had literally just done and like i went because i went to ride <laughs> rise of resistance with a buddy of mine um it was like a third time going and it was super fun and i was like yeah we're gonna we were talking about how like we're gonna go do this all summer because it's you know it works with our schedules it's gonna be so cool and then i haven't been back since how how convenient has that been literally living like 15 minutes away from it it's it's so great I and I know a lot of people who work there, like just because I've grown up in the area, so it's it's nice, you know. Sometimes it'd be like, "Hey, you want to uh, get me in today?" So it's, it's, <laughs> you should run an out. Airbnb or something. <laughs> um, sure I, get I do. I too like Disney. <laughs> nice, but um, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be a fun time. Um, obviously, um, so me and my partner are vac- fully vaccinated. We're still gonna have to wear masks or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, they're they're limiting it strictly to Californian residents, and then obviously there's still everything that's going on. But hey, shorter lines, and uh, we'll be safe <sighs> doing it. So I'm excited. That's pretty good. That'd be awesome. Oh, and you know, I almost forgot. Uh, I have not seen the Mortal Kombat movie yet. I've heard it is I pretty good. Three. It's pretty good. Sheets, <laughs> pretty good gore. Great. Um, I I could watch it on uh, HBO Max. I, I just haven't. Uh, going to the movie theater Tuesday because it's going to be the first time I've been able to see something in the movie uh, theater in well, over I a year. I it when you can watch it for free. I want I'll, that movie theater experience. I, I, I want that I movie theater. I think I want to save that for Spider-Man. Good, I think I want to save that for Spider-Man. I, I want that movie theater popcorn so fucking bad. Go and microwave, buy it and then come, come home. It's that, it's that simple. Microwave popcorn is We're not the same. The I, don't pandemic, care, I don't care. I don't care if it's... I trust the theater for two years. I, I, I don't care if it says mo- movie theater style popcorn. It's not the fucking same. Yeah, I don't care if we're still theaters. in the middle of pandemic and I am vaccinated. I'm not going to a theater for, for you, the next two years. You got the baby boo-boo vaccination, though. I got the big boy vaccination. I'm still vaxxed, bitch. <laughs> 50 Wait, what versus she, 95. Wait, what did you get? I got Johnson. the Johnson Johnson back in March. Hell yeah, me too. Hey! <laughs> Pfizer, baby. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, well, unfortunately, see. when the vaccine wars start, as a member of the Pfizer clan, we're going to have to, you know. Yeah. I might be able to look mm-hmm. the other way if you guys if you guys can kind of keep it on the down low, but if not, <laughs> you know, I got it. I got. I didn't get a blood, to follow. blood clot. I'm safe. Yeah, mm-hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not safe. one of the one of the million. Yeah, I'm not one of the million. I'm good. God, that Come on, Macy. So you need that. Stupid. You need that extra forty five percent. All hey man. All I'm saying is, our vaccine was the only one tested against variants and showed to be effective. So. <laughs> whatever <laughs> <laughs> um with that uh damn that 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 fucking sign off got so goddamn derailed um, <laughs> yeah everyone's ads yep. are on screen it'll be in the descriptions go and support everyone stream yeah, and support, on Wednesday. support your locals yes play dang and rampa bye-bye play, play near please fine play rose <laughs>